NASCAR on Fox welcomes you to finally sunny Southern California. Nestled against the mountains, just a mile south of historic Route 66, we find California Speedway in Fontana. Today, playing host to over 125,000 race fans and 43 of America's best drivers. Welcome to the Napa Auto Parts 500 on Fox. Another big super speedway race. Here, a two-mile speedway. Fast, 205 miles an hour entering the corners, but oh so different from what we saw at Talladega. Hi, everybody. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and three-time Winston Cup champion Daryl Waltrip. Daryl, we have 200-mile-per-hour speeds. But what is going to be different here from what we saw last Sunday? Well, what I like about this racetrack, you've got a lot of options. You've got a lot of places you can run. Great big wide racetrack. You can go three wide here. You can even get down on the apron here. No out of bounds. So you're going to see cars passing each other down this front straightaway, three or four wide. You've got some good lines, different lines into the corners. So it is fast, but it's forgiving. And I like that. And Larry, a lot of differences through this weekend. We qualified in 50 degree weather, practiced in 55 degree weather, and today it feels like Southern California. Yeah, I mean, that's the big curveball for these crew chiefs and these chassis guys. The track temperature is almost double what it was on Friday, up almost 40 or 50 degrees, so they have to build a lot of adjustments in these race cars. I know you don't want to hear this, 250 laps. We have to be thinking about fuel strategy from the minute these cars leave pit road. That's not my problem. <laughs> You're the fellow with the right foot. That's your problem. You okay. got just, I, I've got you covered. <laughs> All right. This race has long been sold out, and these fans are waiting for today's opening ceremonies. Let's go trackside. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation given by the Reverend Tim Griffin from MRO. Pray with me, would you please? Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a spectacular day in Southern California. Thank you for this opportunity to go racing. We pray that you would bless each of the competitors today, the crews, and every fan, and all those who have made this day possible. Bless, we pray, in Christ's name, amen. Please remain standing. Fly over today provided by Naval Air Station Lemoore. The anthem being sung by birthday girl, 12 years old today, Rochelle Dobin. Cheryl Crow, our Grand Marshal, to give the most famous words in racing. Drivers, start your engines!
stock car racing has a rich history in Southern California. The next chapter in that history about to be written. 43 cars and drivers and teams at the ready. 125,000 fans in the home of sun, sand, surf, and fast cars. Hello, I'm Steve Hanshu, president of Napa. On behalf of more than 6,000 Napa Auto Parts stores and over 10,000 Napa Auto Care centers across the nation, welcome to today's Fox broadcast of the Napa Auto Parts 500. It's a beautiful day for racing here in Southern California, so thanks for watching and enjoy the race. 43 cars roll off here in Southern California, the nation's second largest TV market and the largest automobile selling market in the United States. Chrome wheels, they sell a lot of chrome wheels out here. <laughs> Ryan Newman is our Bud Pole winner here at California Speedway. He'll be in the Bud shootout along with these other drivers when we get back to Daytona next February. Since 1979, Budweiser's awarded more than $7 million as sponsor of NASCAR's Pole Award program. Here's our Walmart starting grid for today's race. Heard Bush out there. How can an old guy like me pick a rookie like him to win the race? But I did. <laughs> Another rookie, Ryan Newman. Right there with him on the front row. Another rookie, Jimmy Johnson, shares row two with veteran Dale Jarrett. Here's Dick Bergeron. What a difference a year makes. Going into this race last year, Dale Jarrett had already won three times and was leading the points. This year, he has just one top five finish. He is 16th in points, hasn't won since last July. But this is his best start all year long. Jarrett has a strong horse under him. By Joy. Two Hendrick cars in the top five. Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Nadeau lines up fifth with Michael Waltrip. Tony Stewart with uh, Elliot Sadler. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Rusty Wallace there in the fifth row. Casey, Casey Atwood, Atwood, fastest dodge in the field. There with Johnny Benson. And if I was Michael and Dale Jr., I believe I'd have run my restrictor plate car here this weekend. <laughs> the way they ran last weekend. Ricky Craven with Jeff Green. Jeff Gordon, who's had so much success here, back in the ninth row with Steve Park. And at row 10, Kyle Petty and the number two point man, Matt Kenseth. Here's Steve Burns. Well, Mike, the motto for Matt Kenseth and that 17 team is, don't panic. They qualified 25th at Rockingham and won. Qualified 31st at Texas and won. Today, he starts 20th. Kevin Harvick and Mr. Excitement, Jimmy Spencer in the 11th row. Kenny Schrader, vote for vote pink. And John Andretti <laughs> back there in uh, row 12. It's subliminal. Pink. Yep. Pink. Sterling Marlin there with Mark Martin, the 98 winner. Matt Yoakum. Mike, Mark Martin lost this race back in 1997 on fuel mileage, but he and his team are confident that they can win on fuel mileage today. And how do they know that? Because Jeff Paxson, who's the Winston Cup developmental manager in the engine department, talked to the man in the hat himself, Jack Roush, this morning. They crunched numbers. They feel like Mark can go 52 to 53 laps on a run, which is on the high end, up and down pit road. They feel like today, maybe his 71 race winless streak can come to an end in Southern California. We'll let you take a look down through the starting grid as we get a chance to do something you just can't do in any other sport. We're going to talk to one of the drivers, one of the competitors here. Jerry Nadeau, this is D.W. up in the TV tower, but you got a copy. I hear you, D.W. Hey, man, that's a pretty good place you're starting there. How's that hot rod? Ah, uh, pretty good. Uh, we weren't as good as we wanted to uh, yesterday, so we looked over our teammates' notes and we changed a few springs, a few shocks, sway bars, you know how that is. I feel pretty good about the start today. I think we'll be all right. Get about ready to win a race? Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, hopefully we can do it here in sunny California. Great day to do it. In. Yeah, it looks like all the Hendrick cars are running great this weekend. And man, I want to wish you a lot of luck and I uh, hope you can pull one out. Thanks, D.W. Talk care. Everybody who grew up in Connecticut loves to come to sunny California, <laughs> including him and me. Oh, yeah. Three cars that have to go to the rear of the field for engine changes. Hutt Strickland in the 23, Mike Skinner in the 4 car, and Robbie Gordon in the 31 car have to go to the rear of the field. Let's have a look at our Dr. Souls race analysis for today. 43 cars will start. There were 46 that came to try to qualify. Two-mile track, so 250 laps in the pit window. We'll be watching that all day long. Trust me, it will be a factor probably at the end of this race. Dr. Yeah. Scholes, look, feel, do better. 
Now, this is Southern California weather. Yes, it is. 64 nice. degrees. The nicest it's been all weekend. But the track temperature, that sun's out. The track temperature will continue to come up. These tracks will, these cars will continue to lose grip and slide around this racetrack. Yeah, just because you were good in practice yesterday when it's cloudy and overcast, that might be a bad indication. Uh, or it might even, it might be a good indication you're not going to be that good today because the track is totally different. Plus, we've had the bush race since these cars were on the track last time. You're on board with Ryan Newman, our pole sitter for Team Penske South. The uh, Mobile One on board cam. Newman's number 12. Here's our Circuit City camera in the Sirius Satellite Radio Dodge of Casey Atwood. And the Napa Auto Parts cam on board, well, who else? But Michael Waltrip from the Napa Auto Parts Chevy. Gas it up today, bud. And we have lots of onboard views for you today. If we look past these windshields going in these corners at 200 miles an hour, over 200 miles an hour. And this is my favorite shot. Overhead. I love an overhead. This tells it all right here. This place is packed. That infield was packed that way on Thursday evening when we arrived here. This track similar in shape, layout, design to Michigan International Speedway, but as you'll see throughout the day, it races very different. Very that. different. <laughs> that's the only thing that's the same as that aerial view. Rock, rock. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed uh, there are a variety of ways to spell boogity? Right, and there is no correct spelling. <laughs> there is no Not one that you admit to. Pace cars off, pull in belt tight, and... Here we go, folks. We're going to go down in that first turn. We're going to boogity, boogity, boogity! Southern California. We get all the fans to stand up and help me do that one of these races. Kurt Bush in the 97 continues to fall behind Ryan Newman as they run through the bottom of one and two down that long back straightaway. Yeah, Darrell, one big difference from last week is how quickly they get single pile. Well, it's, it, you know, the group around the, it's going to be right around the bottom for a while. It's going to take a little bit of time to work it up. Although you see Newman is a little high there as he comes through three and four, and that's going to open the door for Kurt Busch right on the inside there. Who will lead the first lap of the Napa 500. It's a drag race. It's Kurt Busch by the line. By a nose. Darrell, they'll run the bottom in one and two, but three and four is a little more forgiving. There's already two grooves down there. Ryan Newman, he's going to the top second groove in one and two. Gets that momentum. And you'll talk about it. You talked about it earlier a little bit. As he gets a little wiggly right there as he gets on the throttle. Low gear. You'll see who has the low gears pull you up on turn two. Yeah, turn two, you exit pretty slow. It's a little, a little slower than turn four is. So you got to have the gear to get out of that, get up on that back straightaway. The back straightaway is not that long, but the front long way from the middle of three and four to the middle of one and two. A lot of jockeying mid-pack as Newman tries to lead lap two. Has a good pull off the high side of turn four. And wow. Dale Jarrett comes by for second. A lot of these guys are running side by side. Dale Jarrett pulled right up to the rear of him. He's going to take second place. Let me tell you, that was impressive. We've seen Dale Jarrett have a good car several times this year, but boy, he just hadn't been able to get it to victory circle. Now Kurt Busch under pressure from Jimmy Johnson, who started in the second row. The 48 is Johnson. There's another rookie that's just poised to win a race somewhere. And that car, it's already been the victory lane. That's the car that Jeff Gordon won Michigan and Indianapolis with last year. I, I've been so impressed with the, the job that that whole team, the 48 team, is doing. Chad Knauss, Jimmy Johnson, the driver, that's a great effort. The one of Steve Park has dropped back to 26th. He started 18th. Well, when you're in traffic like he is right now, the car's a little loose, and that's probably what a lot of guys are going to fight for a while. You can't stand to have somebody right up behind you. And so you got to see the car wiggle. The car's loose. There is no question that car is loose, and those other cars are just making it loose. Oh, yeah, and you can't. you got to get by yourself. you got to get to the back and get somewhere where you got clean air all around the car. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Rusty Wallace started 9th and 10th. They're running 8th and 9th behind Jerry Nadeau. Got a car down on the apron coming in, uh, coming down on the pit lane, looks like. Uh, is that Schrader? Yeah, Schrader. yeah, I thought it was Schrader. Schrader. He has hey, had no luck here? at all this year, at all. 
Rusty underneath Junior. They have bypassed Nadu and moved up now. We heard Nadu say they made a lot of changes to his car. Looked at the notes of his teammates. Sometimes it takes a few laps for the driver to get comfortable after they've worked on the car like as much as they have his, apparently. Dale Jarrett for the lead on Ryan Newman coming off turn four. And he wasted no time in putting that 88 car out front. Newman run, he, he really run up high getting into turn one, kept that momentum up in that second group, arced it in there, Darrell. Well, you, you, you enter turn one way, way high anyway, and uh, you can run that turn a little higher than you can. You can't get into turn three. You gotta stay real low getting into three, but then you can go up high as you come off. So, like I say, this track gives you a lot of options, a lot of room to work. Let's get an update on our pole sitter, Ryan Newman from Matt Yoker. Well, Mike, in the final practice session, Ryan Newman's car was loose up off the corner. His car was extremely fast over the first five to ten laps of a run, but then the looseness really started to go to the extremes. They've made a number of changes before today's race. Now we're going to have to wait and see if those changes have cured that problem. It was a fast car, a fast car on the long run to Dick Berger. Well, Kenny Schrader is in the process of pulling his race car behind the wall. He said that the car has got a bad vibration. It is deep in the engine. Tough break for Kenny Schrader. That's not usually a fixable problem. And Mike, what you find here, Larry knows this, is trying to make the car turn here in the middle of the corner. You carry so much speed entering the turn that the car doesn't want to what doesn't want to cut through the center of the corner. So you keep freeing it up, trying to get it to go through the center, roll through the center. When you do that, sometimes you hurt it up off the corner. It won't get any forward bite. And as a driver, all you can do during a run that we can make adjustments on that car is control the entrance, getting down in the corner. Don't overdrive the entrance where it won't turn in the middle of the corner. Take advantage of what you got and whine about what you don't have. <laughs> we'll fix it when we can. One car has caught that front four, and it is Tony Stewart in fifth place. a lot of daylight behind Ooh. Dale Jarrett. That's because of a torrent battle for second place. Man. That has seen Tony Stewart climb from fifth to second. And right. that's the thing, Darrell. These guys, they get to run side by side, and Dale Jarrett beating them about three-tenths of a lap. Three-tenths of a second a lap. Yeah, we got the 18 car coming down pit lane. This is not good. He's coming to the attention of the crew, and they don't look like they're in a real big hurry. They're going to open the hood. Two Pontiacs in the early going. Traders now Labonte's. I tell you, the guy that's really rim riding around the top of the racetrack is Michael. I mean, he's right up on the out. He's right up in the loose stuff. But he's making great time. I, it, it, I was watching down here in turn three and four. You got to see this. Watch what Michael does to these guys. He's up on the outside there. The 12 can't get back to the throttle. Michael gets on the run on the outside of him. Look at him wiggle when he goes by. His car is really loose. It's what you, it's what you call twitchy. And, Steve, what's Kenny got to say? Well, DW, let's find out. He's sitting in his race car, taking the steering wheel off. Kenny, what's the uh, what's the diagnosis here? What happened? Something laid down the engine. Uh, got dents in the oil pan. I told him it was like it was something major, you know, one of them important parts. But uh, eight out of ten races at the old m and Pontiac has been pretty good, but we still don't have a finished show for it. So next week, we'll go to Richmond. Thanks, Kenny. I guarantee you, if he'll paint that car pink, it'll make a difference. If we keep voting, <laughs> I mean, it's hard to believe his best finish was at Bristol, and that was 22nd place. Yeah. But like Kenny says, they've run well, just not long enough. Well, you see the lead. Dale Jarrett pulled out on the other. Michael's in second. Michael's faster than Dale Jarrett right now. By a good bit. Jarrett's running 42 flat. Michael just ran a 41.55, so he's close. He is, Michael's running that high group. He is up there in the in the championship group. Darrell, as fast as these cars run on the straightaway, we were looking at it uh, over 200 miles an hour. I mean, the draft definitely plays oh, yeah. a part when these guys get lined up. Oh yeah, he's going to get a he's going to get a suck off of Jared here just in a few just in another lap or two. But you know what? Michael ran the Bush race yesterday, and he ran this same line in that Bush race yesterday, and so he knew it was there. All he had to do is go up there and use it. These other guys have got to figure that out on their own. Yesterday here, Scott Riggs picked up his second win of his rookie season. Two wins and only nine Bush Series starts. He's 
off to a great start. I wouldn't be surprised if his phone starts ringing from Winston Cup car owners in the near future. I got some advice for him. Stay right where you are for a while. Well, well, his Bush car owner may have call blocking on Scott's <laughs> phone. I wouldn't well, be surprised. Does. Boy, Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, he's starting to run that high line. We're seeing the groove move up in a hurry here, Daryl. I mean, we're only at lap 16, and there are already three grooves up off the bottom of the racetrack. Well, good news travels fast. Now, that's the bad news for Michael. All those spotters, crew chiefs are calling say, 15 cars running that high line and closing. Get up there with him. Look who's uh, wrapping his tail off is Kurt Busch. He, he tried Jimmy Johnson uh, a little bit ago and then hooked himself right back in line. As uh, we talked about at the top of the show, anticipating what may happen if we get a long green flag run and there's a need to conserve fuel. That 12 car is really bad loose, isn't it, man? DW, you're exactly right. The rookie reporting in his car is really, really, really loose. And he wanted to emphasize the really. He told him just to hang on to it. But the concern that they had before the race has come to fruition. Once his car gets past the 10 to 12 lap points, it is very loose. Now, watch his hands. You see how delicately he's turning on that steering. He can't crank it left. And you've got to be able to snatch that thing down to the left when the car's handling good. He's Top having to be really, really all. easy on it because it's going to jump out from under. If he doesn't see how gingerly he turns right it in front. there, he's not turning the wheel much at all because the car's right. really loose. And look at here. Come on, Mikey. Go for it. He has chopped a bunch off Dale Jarrett in a short time up here running side by side into turn one. And the two of them have run away from Tony Stewart. But Dale's backing up. I mean, he was fast there for a little while, but his lap times are showing he's backing up. That's Mike. not unusual, Mike, because you start this race like he did and you get out there and, oh, trouble right here. Got a car around backwards, turn four, and Sean Robinson. Robinson. Just lost it all by herself. Caution is out. But on Dale Jarrett, it just looks to me like his car was really fast on new tires, but uh, these guys need to watch coming off the corner here. That car's on fire. Now that's, uh, I believe that's just unburnt fuel down in the exhaust system. Yep. It'll snuff out when she fires the car, and it does. That unsponsored machine is heading back to pit road for some serious repair. Now, Bobby Labonte has been on pit road now for 11 laps, Steve. Mike, the problem was Bobby Labonte felt the water pump belt come off and it got wrapped up in other engine components. He was afraid he was gonna damage the engine. They brought the car in, had the hood up, and they replaced the belts. Bobby Labonte is back on the racetrack. These cars have a V belt on them, just a lot like your passenger car. And uh, that belt, that belt right there, the cog belt, that's the oil pump belt. The rest of these belts are the water pump belt, the alternator belt, power steering pump belt. Two two ways that could have happened. One, it could over rev the engine, because if you over rev the engine, those belts will jump. Uh, they'll turn around backwards, uh, much like you've seen on your passenger car. The other thing is, a piece of trash could have gotten up in there and knocked one of them off. And the only one that's detrimental coming off is that oil pump belt. When it comes off, the oil pump's not turning, you're not getting oil pressure. Now, Darrell, we, we're 19 laps. I may bring in here and put two tires on and some fuel. I may do four, but if my car is driving pretty good, I may give you two to try to keep that track position. Please, please give me four you tires You want right four now. tires. And just the air pressure. I don't have enough grip. Here's what put us under the first caution of the day. Watch the white car. Just all by herself. I was looking down right at it. Just spun the car around coming off the corner there. Pit Road is open and everybody's on pit road. Larry, this this isn't like yesterday. We can use all the tires we want to. So give me four. I want to see stickers. No tire rule. I'd say most of them are going to change four, but I bet you we'll see some cars change too. Steve Burns and Rusty Wallace pit. Well, Larry McReynolds, you're exactly right. Rusty Wallace is going to take right side tires only. They're going to make an air pressure adjustment and a wedge adjustment. One round of fight in the left rear. Dick Bergeron. Dale Jarrett is going to take four tires on his automobile and a round and a half of fight on the left rear. They're trying to get more forward fight out of the number 88 car. Snap. Dick, down here in the leader, Michael Walters pit. They made a chassis adjustment and four tires. His car was just a tick tight in the center of the corner, but he is going to beat off, get beat off pit road big time. It appears we had three or four cars that changed just two tires. They documented oh, no, Rusty road, Wallace, Richard tires. Craven, Kevin Harvick, I believe. Jimmy Johnson beats everybody off pit road. There is a speed limit on pit road and vigilance up in the tower. So we're under caution, the first one of the day. Uh, catch can out on the track, they'll pick that up. We'll be back.
The Napa Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. By New Nutriman Ultra, the only once-a-day cure for athlete's foot. By Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. And by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Welcome back to California. Ryan Newman making another pit stop. Stacy Compton had stayed out on the racetrack to lead a lap. He just made his first. And that loose uh, catch can on the track was from Greg Biffle. He's made a penalty stop, and he's back out. Steve Burns. Mike, Shauna Robinson able to drive the car in here. Shauna, what happened? Well, I guess after he ran about 10 laps and so much heat in the tires, and we just had absolutely no grip whatsoever. And, you know, the first few laps, it's like feels good, feel like I can run. And then it's just like the car's up on top of the racetrack. And, and uh, you can see out there not a lot of people had grip, but it just to the point where I couldn't get through the corner. It was pretty bad to be out there by yourself and it happened but no grip whatsoever and it's unfortunate because we we're struggling and and bam is giving me the chance to drive a race car and it's um a really good opportunity but um we're not having good results at this point so we'll just keep trying and the team's got a lot of potential it's just we're we're having some bad luck thanks Sean. thanks getting set for the restart after 22 laps and for all of those of you who spent all your Christmas cash on that new, or some of it, on that new surround sound system. We're going to give you a chance to exercise it right about here. Johnson with Ricky Craven off into turn one with the lead. And just again, the document, the top three, Jimmy Johnson, Ricky K. Craven, and Rusty Wallace all changed two tires. That's how they made it to the front of the field through that sequence of pit stops. I don't know what they've done to TIDE. That's a little bit different paint job than I'm accustomed to seeing, but I kind of like it. It looks like it might be fast. Got something new on that bad boy. Got some blue on it. All right, Tony Stewart in fourth place. Back there behind Rusty Wallace, first of the cars that took off four tires. Matt Yoakum. Well, currently, Tony Stewart, like you mentioned, Mike running fourth, matching his best career finish here at California. He said the car was a little snug on entry through the center of the corner, but when he was the gas, the car would start to go loose. So they made a wedge adjustment half around in the left rear. Four tires, no air pressure adjustments. And that caution, Larry, as you well, that, that came at a perfect time. We'd run about 20 laps. Guys can... can, uh, can adjust their cars based on what the track conditions are today, so it's a great opportunity to get in there and work on it. Especially with these track conditions being different. Dick Burford, what's going on with Kurt Busch? Well, he had been running in fifth spot when that caution flag came out, Larry. Uh, took on four tires, adjusted the car, one pound added to the right front to try and tighten it up a little bit. He came out in tenth spot, car running pretty well. To Steve Burns. Well, Dick, our points leader, Sterling Marlin, only has one top ten finish here in five races at California, so the team came out here and tested, but crew chief Lee McCall said they've been fighting a tight condition all weekend, so on the last stop, they took a pound out of the right front, took four tires, and went down two rounds on the track bar. New paint job for Sterling. He'll have that for a few races this year. And, you know, Mike, you and I this morning talked to the team manager, Andy Grace, for Sterling Marlin and Jimmy Spencer, and they said based on the weather change, they really looked at what Jimmy Spencer ran in the Bush race yesterday and did, took a lot of information from that car. Because that was the last event run on the track yesterday before the IROC race and was running kind of warmer temperatures. Well, Darrell, you said you wanted four tires on that caution flag, and Tony Stewart is showing us why. Yeah, well, I think, I think guys that took two, they won't do that again for a while. That's a, that's a move for later on in the race. That's a move for when you're trying to keep out in front of the traffic or whatever. But right now, you put four on and adjust the car. Get the car good. Get the car better. Then give me two. 
And I'm always, you know, Larry and I are never going to agree about that. <laughs> That's one thing that, that you argue about all day long, you and the crew team. It's okay. There's the interval, Tony Stewart to our leader, Jimmy Johnson. Right now it's actually, he's losing a little bit of ground, at least through three and four he did. Even down the front straightaway, Jimmy got a good runoff turn four. It's over a second, um, gained about two tenths right there in three and four. They stretched it out. Now Rusty, uh, he took two tires and uh, his car looks pretty good on two tires. Battling Craven. It's now for third place. And you know, a lot of times, there, when you put two right-side tires on with the left side that's been on the car, it takes a couple laps because the air pressure's way down on the new right sides, and the left side's already, the air pressure's already grown from what you've been running the first 20 laps. So they have, they got to match up. they got to kind of equalize themselves. The only thing that bothers me, and I hear these guys say it, and it makes me kind of worry, they keep wanting to let air out of that right front tire. I mean, that'll make the thing cut. That'll make it feel really good, but Larry, you know that's going to be hard on that tire and you can have a problem. The right front tire takes the most load here. Again, we keep talking about entering these corners at over 200 miles an hour. Third place, side by side, still Craven, Wallace, Kurt Busch, and Michael Walter in tow. Have a little onboard telemetry. You can hear him get back in the throttle. He doesn't get quite wide open. He starts back in it and he kind of eases it down, almost like it's got an egg under it. That's the kind of kind of what you do here. You get it wide open as soon as you can, but uh, you got to get back in it. But sometimes you can't man it right away. Right at 200 miles an hour. Right at 9,000 RPMs. Falls down to about uh, probably about 6,800 in one and two. Picks the throttle back up. 150 miles an hour in the middle of the corner. Off the throttle. of 250 complete here in sunny Southern California. And El Cajon native Jimmy Johnson leads the Napa 500. Jimmy Johnson leads Tony Stewart by 1.2 seconds. Rusty Wallace, a further second back. Kurt Busch, Ricky Craven, Dale Jarrett, Michael Waltrip, Dave Blaney up to eight. Point leader Sterling Marlin, ninth, and Jeff Gordon, who fell from seventh to 18th on the pit stop, has climbed to 10. Now, Ryan Newman, our pole sitter, has drifted back to 28. Matt Yoakum's there. And let's catch in and talk with his crew chief, Matt Boland. Matt, you made a stop there. You made some significant changes. What did you do to tighten up that race car? Uh, we just put a little bit of bind in, dropped the track bar, put a little bit of pressure in the right front. Just a little too loose to start the race. Hopefully, we can free him up a little bit later. This team is looking to have a character building day after a tough stretch of finishes of 37th, 40th, 41st, and 43rd. They're hoping for better things here in California. But they're going to have a long fight on their hands to have a good day today. To Steve. Matt, as Mike Joyce said, Dave Blaney in that 77 started in the 32nd position, but he's up to eighth by virtue of taking two tires on the last stop. They dropped air pressure in the right rear. Dave Blaney says the car is tightened up nicely, a little bit loose early. His best finish this year of 15th at Texas. Dick Berger. Ricky Craven started in 15th spot. He, too, took just two tires on that first pit stop. That was good for third, and he had been riding there for several laps until he came on the radio, told the crew that the car is loose off, Fight in the middle. We've got to fix it on the next pit stop. Craven now running in fifth position. Thanks, Dick. Jimmy Johnson is the protege of Jeff Gordon, who co-owns that car with Rick Hendrick. Daryl Pupil leading by 1.1 seconds. And teacher about seven seconds back in 10th place. Now. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Johnson. I said early in the show that he's poised to win a race, and this could be the day. Eight at night. His boss right, there, is right back here, not too far behind. and got a pretty good hot rod himself. He's up to 10. We saw him just blast through the middle of Ricky Rudd and Dale Earnhardt Jr. while we were in break there. Uh, Gordon, although he drifted back in the field on the caution flag pit stop, which is uncharacteristic of that crew, he's on the march back to the front. He's gained seven positions since the restart at lap 23. I tell you a car that as I walked through the garage area this morning that a lot of car teams were pointing to, he started back in 39th position, and that's Bill Elliott. He has worked his way through virtue of pit stops and all up to 13th position. 
And again, he's kind of backing up what I think we saw in happy hour. I mean, he was fast, but he was fast for a long period of time. That's what we were looking at yesterday. But look right there on the grill. You uh -oh. see that plastic, and uh, you know, I'm sure the spotter has probably seen that, and he's going to be communicating. Watch your water temperature gauge. That's right over the radiator. Yeah, well, it could be why he's so fast. <laughs> well, when you take when you put tape or plastic on the front end, it reduces the drag and increases the front downforce. Absolutely, but over a long run, it'll make that water heat up. That's awful big for a hot dog wrapper. Could that have been somebody's windshield you, tear I, off? I believe it just, it just just flew off. Just flew off. It's gone, and that's a good thing. I tell you, I was watching off of turn four there just a couple laps ago, and Robbie Gordon came off of turn four in between two cars here, and I was, this guy, he did some, a lot of steering. Thing jumped sideways on him. It was, it, it looked a lot worse when I was looking at it. He had the side of it. I could read 31 on it. And you, Darrell, what happened there happens a lot. You you almost run out of racetrack, and Brett Bodine and 11 was right up there, and it's like he yanked the steering wheel and got it loose. Hey, look at my little buddy here. Rusty and uh, the 32 car both will pay, they'll pay the price for those two tires and it won't take long. Steve? And Darrell, we just heard Rusty Wallace tell crew chief Billy Wilburn that his car is tight because of those two tires now fighting a tight condition. Yeah, what happens is you, your left sides, they give up and it, it makes the front, it, you're, you're just pushing because you don't have any left side grip. And that, that's what will happen, they'll just wear the tires down car won't turn and even when your car is driving good if you're going to elect to put just two right side tires on you normally will have to make an adjustment to compensate for just those two right side tires take a little wedge out sterling marlin on the move took eighth place away from dave blaney who as steve points out one of those cars that took two tires on the last stop prior to today jimmy johnson had led a total of 14 laps in his career today he's already led 20. jimmy johnson out front in california Seventy-five laps complete, almost one-third distance. Kurt Busch has passed Jimmy Johnson for the lead in the Napa Auto Parts 500. It's something we always like to look at on the green flag stops. It's about a pit stop, but it's about those two laps. That's what this is, lap. That's two laps. That's two laps, including the pit stop. Tony Stewart, Sterling Marlin, their group doing their job on pit road. But look right here at Tony Stewart, same as Kurt Busch. And that's where that was. It was on their entrance, getting to pit road before that 55 miles an hour. And that let Kurt Busch close in on Jimmy Johnson almost two seconds. Difference of four seconds there in the two laps alone. Oh yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a race to get stopped down to 55. It's another race to get started back up to 55. And to do that the quickest, as you can see, it pays off. I think Stewart's been watching Michael Schumacher, who's the world's best at getting oh, on the road. I love to watch him. His in and outs are great. Our subway race summary at 76 laps, nine changes among six different leaders. Under green, we've been averaging 180 miles an hour, 31 cars on the lead lap, and just the one caution for Shauna Robinson's single car accident at lap 18. And if you watch Michael Schumacher, this morning he won again. Uh, I think they were in the Spanish Grand Prix, maybe. This I'm not sure where it was, but anyway, he won. Kurt Busch passing by Mike Skinner, one of the three cars that made an engine change and since yesterday afternoon. Had to start at the back. Only two cars in the garage, Robinson, as we mentioned, and Ken Schrader, who lost an engine at lap four. Darrell, it's, it's a continuing thread this season youth versus experience our leaders 23 years old our runner up Jimmy Johnson there is 26 years old then comes 45 year old Rusty Wallace 44 year old Sterling Marlin 45 year old Dale Jarrett two kids three veterans in the top five and those old guys are saying well, I don't mean old guys I shouldn't say it that way the the the, the, the older fellas out there they're saying I wish some young boys would slow down a little bit they're like <laughs> hard on us you know, this this race right now, we, we see this about year in and year out here where it gets to this point of the race and they kind of get strung out and we kind of have a green flag run. But what Jeff Hammond, what I really had to do under this last run, it was our first long run. I really had to interrogate my driver what that car did. But I think we'll see everybody under these green flag stops change four tires. But right now we're not in a fuel mileage strategy. You'd have to run 61 laps three times. And I don't think anybody can do that. 
You're right, Larry, but one thing I did notice, and Daryl kind of touched on this, is the guys who came in closer to lap, you know, 69, 70, 71, have put themselves in a uni unique position because if they can go 50 to 51 laps on the next couple runs, their last stop could be two tires and one can of gas, and you could easily pick up about six seconds on the rest of the field if they have to stay there to get more gas in their cars and go for that second can. And the way that the field is now spread out, I mean, we got a few cars racing each other, but basically for 500 miles here, there's times in this race when you run your own race. You run, the, you're racing the clock, basically. Crews telling you how fast you're going and you want to conserve some engine-wise and fuel-wise. And they'll watch the leader, especially, especially those spotters on top of this grandstand. They'll be clocking that leader and watching what line he's running and maybe relaying that to the driver. Look, the leader's running high in one and two, low in three and four. Let's see. Let, let you move your car around and let's see if it makes a difference. Here you can see the spotters on top of the, the grandstands looking down. Why is it your coach driver and Ricky Craven's spotter always stands closest to our camera? I think he pays the cameraman it before must the be. race. Steve Burns. <laughs> Rusty Wallace came in, took four tires this time. He'd been fighting a tight condition. They raised the track bar a quarter turn and even the air pressures on the, the right side. Nick Burton. Well, Jeff Gordon started this race in 17th position. This is a race that he has won on two separate occasions. Right now, he is running in 10th spot and dropping back with almost every lap. The car goes back and forth between being too tight and too loose. They've got to get it faster if Gordon's going to break that 17 race losing streak. To Matt. Dick, in the final practice session on Saturday, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was fighting a tight race car. They tried to start the day loose, but he's been fighting a tight car today. The first stop, they pulled out a spring rubber. The last stop, a wedge adjustment. Tony Sr., how is your race car now? Car's real tight. Uh, seems like we're getting by ourselves. most points of any other driver over the past six races. He's got championship on his mind. He's got the bigger picture on his mind today, knowing he just has to wait until they can get again to work on this race car. 82 laps complete. Here's your leader, Kurt Busch. He's now two seconds out front of Jimmy Johnson. Sterling Marlin a further five seconds back in third after this long run of green flag racing. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Back to Fontana, California, 87 of 250 laps complete. Young Kurt Busch in command of this race now by 4.2 seconds over Jimmy Johnson. And the reason why, Mike, is he is running 41.6 lap times. Everybody behind him is running high 41s up into the 42s. I mean, I think if I was the crew chief right now, and it's hard to do with these kids, I know, but I'd be pulling back on that rain a little bit. I'd be saying, hey, kid, you know, we got a long way to go. He just slapped his teammate Jeff Burton, who is amongst the Coke family of drivers, showing Dale Jarrett in fourth, Tony Stewart in sixth. Always love what Junior Johnson told me. You can slow him down, but you can't speed him up. And that's just a time right now we might want to slow him down just a little bit. You can bit. pull a rope, but you can't push it. It don't work. Bobby Labonte there spent uh, several laps in the pits with the hood up. Currently in 41st, the last car running nine laps down. What's up, Bear Hambone? Well, I'm just wondering, I listen to you guys talking about these drivers and, and trying to control that situation out there, Daryl. Let's just say that you're the owner, Jack Roush, and you're taking Jack's position today here. How would you tell Kirk Bush at this point in time to run that race car? Well, the only thing I'm saying is, is be cautious, be, be con conserved just a little bit. I mean, I'm not worried about him physically, I'm not worried about him mentally, but I'm worried about the race car. And you can't drive these things in the ground. I just, I just think you got it's 500 miles, it's not 400 like Michigan. You got to save a little something. As, as we've been telling right now, Larry, float it in the corner and just very careful on that right front tire. You got to save the right front tire here because when that finally does give up that grip, that's where a lot of those guys are going to start hollering because they're not going to be able to get back to the throttle when the car needs to rotate coming off the corner. Dick Bergman, you got some idea? Well, I know exactly what Kirk Bush has been told, and whether it's right or wrong, the instructions are keep that pace. That's what Jimmy Fenning has told him. Well, you see it's expanding his lead now up to five seconds. He's about to lap past Kyle Petty, and 
Thursday, Kyle spoke to high school students here in Fontana to stress the importance of safe driving. The uh, Teen Safety 500, Kyle's the spokesman for that. Uh, here in Southern California, where the car culture is still king, they do have quite a lot, few issues in this area with street racing, especially among teenagers. And Kyle was out there to try to convince those kids to save their racing for the racetrack. You know, talking about Kurt Busch, I think where he really has to be careful, Daryl, is when he's coming to these lap cars. That's where you want to be careful. But talking about that right front tire, as long as that car is not pushing and turning good, you're not as concerned about that right front tire because you're not sliding. You're not abusing it. If that car ever starts pushing, that's when you kill that driver. Take care of that right front tire. Don't drive that thing so far in the corner. Well, that's what I always tell the crew chief. They say, take care of the tires, take care of the tires. I said, if a car handles good, I don't have to worry about that. They'll take care of themselves. Well, now 41 car on pit road. And for more, Dick Bergman. Hey, Darrell, Kurt Busch has just heard what you wanted him to hear. Jimmy Fenning said you get past the five, back it down a little bit, take it easy. He is not going to start to take it easy, as you suggested. Well, I just I just believe, uh, just standing up here watching the car go around the racetrack, he's got these cats covered. And, uh, you know, this isn't the time to, to beat them in the ground. Let's just save that for the end of the day. We heard about Jeff Gordon's problem, Daryl, where the car is loose and then it pushes and then it loses. How does the car transition like that during a run? Well, I think it's probably mostly arrow. I think that uh, depending on the traffic, see, by he's running all by himself. And I think that's probably two things. It gives him a chance to figure out what's wrong with his race car and what to tell the team. The other thing is the car doesn't seem to be happy in dirty air. It seems to be a little happier all by itself. I believe he's fighting an arrow probably here every week, Mike, with that car. He gets back in traffic and he can't drive it. Well, he's back in 10th place and he's, uh, let's see, 42 seconds on his last lap, 22 seconds off the lead. But you know, guys, we actually have three Chevrolets in the top team. Remember, about three races ago, NASCAR made a change for the Chevrolets. They let them stretch the car out. We've had a measurement from right there to the front edge of the bumper that was 99 inches. They let them add an inch and a quarter, stretch that front end out. It still had to fit the template, and you couldn't have more pitch from the valence to the front bumper, but they let them stretch the front end out an inch and a quarter, and that pretty much mirrors where the tre Intrepid, the Dodge Intrepid in the Ford Taurus is. That gives you more front downforce, stretching that car out toward the front. Matt Yoka. Well, Larry, I talked to Robbie Loomis on Friday, and Jeff Gordon echoed his sentiments that they felt like this car had the most front down force of any car in their stable. They ran it last year at They felt like with that arrow push problem, the car would not qualify well because it would be on the looser side, but in traffic, that car would be better, but apparently not. Now, one of the things that you can adjust on a pit stop is the, the fenders. If you notice the left front fender on that thing, see how far out there it is? And that's going to give you a lot of left. That's going to put a lot of downforce on that left front. The other thing, if the car is loose in, you can push that right fender in. So you pull the left one out, plant the left front, push the right one in to, free, to give the car a little bit better fuel getting down in the corner. Those fenders are critical. The NASCAR guys watch you, but you can't play with them a little bit. But you know one thing I don't like, Daryl, is making your car turn with all front downforce. If you don't do it with the chassis, you lose that downforce in traffic. But all you can do is pull and push on fenders on pit stops. Well, I think that's one of the things he fights every week. I, I mean, you think back, it's always uh, not good in traffic. Well, right now, his lap times are mirroring those of our leader, Kurt Busch. <laughs> DW sign here. 95 laps complete in California. The Napa Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. 99 laps complete, 40% distance. Mark Martin just made a stop for four tires, and a little bit earlier, Jimmy Spencer came in unscheduled, only 24 laps after he had been. Hey, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? The SpongeBob SquarePants. Mm, my kids must be getting too old. I don't know about SpongeBob SquarePants. I had to call. Is that like Flat Stanley? I'm still, to... yeah, I'm still working on Flat Stanley myself. <laughs> I do know about DW and Arthur. Well, Scott is three and Katie's two, and I had to come home, a call home, during the commercial to get the exact wording. Kendall's four, and I still don't know who. Okay. SpongeBob? I'll okay. get you a tape. Okay. Gotta pay attention. You know about Veggie Tales? Oh, I love Veggie Tales. Yeah, Larry Boy. That's where Larry Boy comes from. Larry right. Boy, okay. Yeah. We'll fill you in. Dale Jr. has drifted back a bit here. He's 15th. Off. All three very serious problems. Uh, 
dive and he picks loose in, loose off, go back and pick the tight in the center. I love that. All three very serious <laughs> problems. But I, I agree with the crew chief, Tony Uri. We, we have to fix that loose end. Oh, yeah. Because if we fix the loose end, if we make an adjustment to fix that, it's probably going to fix the loose off. And you know what? Go back to Ryan Newman a while ago. We, we get it where he can turn that steering wheel, get in the corner. It may fix that push in the middle of the corner. I'd lot rather be turning that wheel to the left than I had to be trying to just hold it straight. See right there how much uh, they put on him getting in the corner. He just can't drive it in the corner. You know, we're watching from Jeremy Mayfield's car just ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeremy, former winner here, he's having a strong day. Currently 15, he just passed by or bypassed the eight car. Up to 15. Well, now is when my buddy here and Jeff down in the hotel, they're doing all this strategizing. You see, they're starting to think about gas mileage and pit stops and tires and two tires and they're worrying me to death wanting to know how the car is. Well I do need to know what the car is doing because in about eight to ten laps we're going to be back on pit road about lap 110 to 115 but there's no question I'm going to put four tires on you. I don't want you to have to run another 45 laps on those same laps. No. Oh and Junior runs right up to Ryan Newman. Just so you don't think there was anything loose inside that car. Uh, Larry, describe what that is. It's part of the roof flap system that was hanging there on that in-car shot. It's not something that's broken or loose. Yeah, there's a cable, and when if the roof flaps deploy, it will only let them go at about 90 degrees. It's, it, it keeps them from going all the way out, open and fly open all the way. Brian Newman, our pole sitter. He's in 17th right now. Here comes Kurt Busch on Casey Atwood. Casey just moves down to the inside, gives him uh, plenty of room to go by. Smart thing to do. I mean, if the guy's caught you and laughing you, no need trying to hold him up or race him. Stacy Compton on pit road and Greg Biffle making his first Winston Cup start in Roush Ford coming to pit lane as well. So we begin the next round of green flag pit stops. 104 laps complete. Kurt Busch out in front of Jimmy Johnson Chevrolet now by nearly seven seconds. Welcome back to California Speedway. Here's today's Taco Bell track fact. This is the sixth Winston Cup race here in Fontana. Jeff Gordon, the only repeat winner. Five drivers broke the track record in qualifying. 207 miles an hour into turn number one. When Gilles DeFerrin qualified his cart car here in October 2000, he ran a lap at 241 miles an hour. That's never been done anywhere. Taco Bell reminds you to think outside the button. Kurt Busch is thinking about 6.7 seconds. His lead has dwindled a little bit on Jimmy Johnson, not much. And what I've been seeing, Daryl, is in one and two, both of them are running pretty much the bottom of the racetrack. But down in three and four, Kurt Busch seems to run the high side. Jimmy Johnson has moved his car all the way to the bottom in three and four. Well, it's just the, the nature of this racetrack. As your car changes, uh, you can move around a little bit and find a place where it drives a little bit better for you and still keep good lap times. Trouble for Stacy Compton. As his uh, AJ Foyt owned Pontiac headed to the garage to join Shauna Robinson and Kenny Schrader. Stacey had a great run yesterday, he finished third in the first race, but uh, behind the wall today. 140 laps to go, and we're told the second place car, Jimmy Johnson, may be pit side a lap from now. What we have to remember a while ago, Kurt Busch, he ran four more laps than Jimmy Johnson did on the first set of green flag stops. Boy, one thing you don't want to do, Larry, when you got a car like Kurt Busch, you don't want to run it out of fuel. Well, and as we mentioned a while ago, we're not really in a fuel window where it breaks up, so don't stretch it. There's no reason to stretch it. No time to gamble. It's time to be smart. Don't beat yourself. Kurt Busch stays out as Jimmy Johnson slows down to what looks like a snail's pace, 55 <laughs> miles an hour in the pit lane. That's the speed limit. And it's a long way down to pit number one. All the way down. Great place to be when they're under caution. Takes forever under green. Now. Matt Yoakum's waiting on him. Jimmy Johnson was reporting in about three, four laps ago, and they were talking about what adjustments to make to this 48 Lowe's machine. He said the car is still loose. Not extremely bad loose, but it is loose. They made a wedge adjustment. This will be a four tire change. 
jack and lifts up that car. They hit the lux on the front, a little slow on the back, and he is good to go. Right at your screen, Dale Earnhardt Jr. fighting to keep from going a lap down, not successful. Kurt Busch puts him a lap down. Stop's really going to cost Jimmy Johnson right there. A lot of trouble in the left rear. You almost figure that's about five or six seconds slow. And he didn't need that right now. Absolutely not. Kevin Harvick in the pit lane and Steve Grissom. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he went a lap down a lap ago. He decided to come to pit road, try to make that car better. Isn't that pretty typical in a long green flag run? Stay out, stay out, stay out. But if you lose a lap, get in here. As soon as you go to lap down, pit. I mean, that's, that's kind of good strategy. Dale Jarrett on pit road, along with Steve Park and Tony Stewart. Bill Elliott joins them. Who had moved up into the seventh position. He's been moving forward all day. Yeah, you were right about him, Larry. He's got a pretty good looking hot rod there. John Andretti in the 43 car on pit road. All these routine stops, four tires and adjustment. Dick Bergman. This morning, Todd Parrott, the crew chief of the number 88, Dale Jarrett's car, said it takes some fuel to feed those ponies. This car has got a wickedly strong engine in it. His fuel mileage, however, has not been as good as some of his competitors. Four tire change to that. And Jeff Gooch Patterson grabs that second can of gas. They've already made a wedge and track bar adjustment, and Stewart's down and away. He was tight in loose off. Casey Atwood, Joe Nemechek, Johnny Benson on pit road. Here comes Jeff Gordon, Ward Burton, and Ricky Craven. Yeah, and uh, you know, Joe's got it. Joe Nemechek's got that uh, checker sponsorship on the car here, and, they, and they're trying to work a deal with those guys. And the chairman, Maynard Jenkins, is watching today. Hey, Maynard, stay on the car, buddy. They Rick, need you. Ricky Rudd's in as well, along with Jeff Green. Green flag stops, Dick Bergman. Well, Jeff Gordon is desperately trying to win one of these things. It just seems as if it's been forever and eternity since last September when he won a Winston Cup race. Car today has not been to his liking, just hasn't run as fast as it needs to. Nothing spectacularly wrong, just not as fast as Kurt Busch and some of the others. It's going to be a four tire stop for Gordon, and he's done. Points leader Sterling Marlin is in. No adjustments on the previous stop. This time, they make a track bar adjustment. A tire lose for a second. Fourth tires for Sterling Marlins Dodge. Only one top ten finish here in California. Five starts and his service is finished. Jerry Nadu, Rusty Wallace, Matt Kenseth, Brett Bodine, Terry Labonte on pit road. There's Kenseth, the number two point man, stopping one lap after Marlin. Michael Walter, the 15 car, he's in along with Hunt Strickland. Kurt Busch continuing the circle, which he ran about as far as anybody earlier, and then what he would want right here is a caution flag. And um, here's Michael Walter in. I'm a little surprised, Larry. We were led to believe this morning in the garage here that Bush wasn't getting that good gas mileage. <laughs> Wait, Jimmy Finney, his crew chief. Excuse me. We were not going to get that good of mileage, but let's see what Matt Yoakum has to say about your brother Michael. Michael comes to a stop. He was extremely tight earlier in the race, but Slugger Labius Krupchi tells me the car is not as bad on the tight side now. They did make a wedge adjustment, four tire change. Also, they're going to make an air pressure adjustment on the 15 car Mikey, and he is good to go. 14.7 seconds. Hut Strickland, Dave Blaney, Kyle Petty, Jeff Burton in the pit lane. I should say, Larry, we were in. misled this morning. Yeah, well, here's what I, I, I can't figure out. I don't believe crew chiefs know how to figure gas mount. Because so you ask them at the end of the race, are they going to make it? Oh, I don't know. And you ask them before the race, oh, we're not getting very good gas mileage. Well, you know, the I, do, I don't know covers us. Uh, That's yeah. what I thought. It's like being a weatherman. But Kurt Busch, the leader, 97, he's on pit road here at lap 117, Dick Berger. 4,200 RPM as Kurt Busch comes on down to the attention of his crew. He won a truck race here back in year 2000. Incredibly, as well as he is running today, this is only his second Winston Cup start at this speedway. Bush having things go exactly his way. He's got a fast race car that's getting excellent fuel mileage. The crew so far has been flawless. They've done their job. Boom, and first out of here. 15 seconds. Wow. And if you watch a pit stop and we got the timer on, if you can do right sides in about seven seconds, you're going to have a great pit stop. It takes almost 14 seconds to dump those 22 gallons of fuel, two cans. 
118 laps complete. Closing in on halfway, just seven laps from now in the Napa Auto Parts 500 on Fox. Welcome back live here at the Napa Auto Parts 500 in Fontana, California. Fox appreciates you joining us. The Coors Light halfway recap. Brought to you by Coors Light. Nine lead changes. We've had just one caution so far. The record here for this racetrack is a four. Jimmy Johnson led 44 straight laps. Kurt Busch took the lead on lap 74 after green flag pit stops. And Kurt Busch is your current leader. Chris Myers with Jeff Hammond watching from the Hollywood Hotel. The race record average speed is just over 155 miles per hour. We are averaging today just over 160 miles per hour, which would be a record for this track and this race, Jeff, as we uh, take a look at the leader. With these the temperatures and the sun shining, is that record likely to, uh, to stay intact? Well, right now, if we just stay caution-free, Chris, I believe we do have an excellent opportunity to break the record. Kirk Bush and all his young guns are just doing a great job right now getting around this racetrack, making the adjustments to keep up with the different temperatures from earlier in the week, earlier on in the weekend that they had cooler temperatures. And as long as we don't have any kind of cautions, we're probably going to break this record. He's really looking like he's got an awesome ride right now. But right, we can go back to pole sitter Ryan Newman. No pole sitter has won a race of this year, and he had a record qualifying speed, but he has since fallen back. And you and I were observing, and you said, hey, there, there's a race within a race here because there's a gap widening and a real separation going on. Yeah, there really is. You know, we talk always about the leader and the lead pack. When guys go down a lap, Chris, all of a sudden the guys that are a lap down, like a John Andretti, Ryan Newman, Dale Earnhardt Jr., they got a race within a race when they find out these cars are on the lead on the lap down like they are. They've got to start trying to get as up as far as they can because there are points to be gained by being the highest car a lap down. So you've got to focus on those cars then. So you really are running like two races. You try to stay ahead of the leader, not lose any more, but you want to be as close as you can or in front of all the guys that are in the same lap with you. Michael Walchuk currently running eight to get a look from his car. We saw Jeff Gordon, who is running ninth, still looking for his first win of the year. Let's go back upstairs and rejoin Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. And just to follow up on what Jeff's saying is there's a point in the race where keep giving me the leader's times, the leader's times. And, and I, I'll say I don't care about the leader. I can't outrun him. Tell me about people I'm racing. Tell me about people that I can beat. That's the crowd I want to work on. And Tony Stewart, whoa, man, he just brought that thing off of turn four running wide open. I mean, that was sudden. What is wrong with Stewart? Man, I, I tell you, I don't say, man, he couldn't get that thing slowed down. I don't think. They're not even hardly ready for him. No, One crewman goes over the wall. No, they're going under the hood. There's something happening. Under the hood. He came off turn four. And I mean, he just, he just turned it to the bottom running wide open. Looks like he's on a normal lap right here. All of a sudden he felt something. He felt something in the engine. And I mean he brought that thing off the racetrack. Stewart was running at sixth at the time. Now I hope he's not having one of those belt problems like his teammate had earlier. Sometimes, you know, it happens to one, it happens to both of them. Bobby Labonte lost four laps when the water pump belt came off. Matt, what's the problem? Well, Mike, they have raised the hood, like you mentioned. Apparently, the problem for Stewart, he's reporting that his throttle linkage has broken. His throttle linkage has broken. They've got some tie wraps. Chris Woody Woodward, the engine tuner, was underneath the hood there. They're going to lower the hood down. Tough break for Stewart. He's going to go at least probably three laps down. Ricky Craven inside of Michael Waltrip, eighth place at stake there, right behind Jeff Gordon. Yeah, Gordon had just passed uh, the 32 car. But Gordon and Michael have been working pretty well together, Darrell. They've been working up through the field there just a little bit, and uh, Gordon's up to eighth. You know, Darrell, I have to believe this racetrack's going through that transition period. We're in the heat of the day here in Southern California. I mean, the track temperature is up to 116 degrees now, 110 when it started. The handling of these cars are going to continue to change in these last 125 laps. What I've found, Larry, and I think you'll agree, when my car is really handling good like Kirk Bush's is, you can't mess it up. You can put any kind of tires on you want and do anything to it you want to. But when the car's fickle, when it's not happy, you, you can't ever, you always are chasing it. Front to rear, front to rear, wedge in, wedge out, track bar, track bar down, air pressure, air pressure. 
But when that thing is right like Bush's is, you just drive on. Well, when it's not not happy, it's like walking on a razor blade. When you're happy like Kirk Bush, you know, you've got like a wide beam to walk There on. you go. Tony Stewart was too fast down pit road, so he'll get the new uh, drive-through penalty. You don't have to stop in your pits for a stop and go anymore, but you do have to make a pass down pit road at the proper pit road speed. So he's doing one, he's doing 55 while everyone else is doing 180. And this almost is kind of like what happened to Sterling Marlin back in Vegas when Sterling got almost spun and headed down pit road. And I'm sure that he didn't have time to look at his tag because he was trying to hang on to the car. And Tony probably just all of a sudden felt that light linkage break shot down pit road. Matt? Well, Mike, I caught up with Greg Zipidelli. Zippy, what was the official problem? Throttle linkage? The hind joint broke on the throttle linkage. Um, I, I, I don't know why. And I'm under, any reason this car's only been run twice? Uh, you know, it's not like something that's been abused or, or you know, the car's never been wrecked. I, I don't really know. I just know that uh, it's pretty frustrating because this team's been doing a hell of a job. Open Deep and Tony's been doing great. Been running the top five. Good speeds all year. We just seem to can't put it together. A little frustrating right now, but uh, we'll just do the best we can here and, uh, you know, come out of here with what we can. Let's go to Jeff Hammond, Jeff. Well, man, right now we're down here at the Cutaway Car and we'll show everybody at home. This right here is your throttle linkage. It connects to your carburetor. The driver is working and it works back and forth like so. But if for some reason the rod itself or the little hind joint or even this ear on the transmission is what's in the transmission carburetor is what's broken, the throttle will not work. And hey, race cars don't run unless you can work the throttle, right, Daryl? Yeah, and I think that maybe that's the problem. He was working it too much. But the other thing, Jeff, is you know, if you don't have a stop down in the floor, where the throttle's not pulling back on that uh, arm that you were showing there all the time where you're just pushing it with your foot. You gotta have a stop down in there and that could be the problem. How about it, do you think that's a problem? It very easily could be, D. Uh, it's hard to say right now, in our particular car we've got is set up with a stop out here on the carburetor. And if Tony didn't have that, if it kept pulling on it, like you say, it's real easy to break this hind. Normally the team run what they call aircraft quality hind, but it could have very easily maybe pulled out of here this thing is threaded down inside the shaft right here, and if for some reason it pulled the threads out because it was pulling too hard against it, again, that could have been what part of the problem is. Darrell, that may be another reason why Stewart didn't slow to 55 miles an hour on pit road. With a broken linkage, he couldn't maintain that speed. It would have taken him all day to get to his pit. Well, the Joe Gibbs team, not a good day. Tony Stewart, three laps down, throttle linkage. Bobby Labonte, nine laps back after tossing a water pump belt. 133 laps, Kurt Busch in command. I tell you, boys, that young man is putting a whooping on these guys right now. That young man in that 97 car, I mean, he is going. And two cars with unscheduled pit stops, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Spencer. Matt? Well, Mike, Dale Earnhardt Jr. made an unscheduled pit stop. He felt like that the right front tire was starting to go soft, starting to go down, go down possibly had cut it down, and that's indeed what had happened. The, the crew had checked the air pressure, and they said it was low on the right front to Steve Burns. Well, Matt, a little while ago, Larry McReynolds talked about how the track condition may be changing. Well, Rusty Wallace, early in this race, was fighting a tight condition. The last stop, they went down a pound in the right front, up a pound in the right rear, made a wedge adjustment, a round of wedge out. Well, Rusty says now the car has gone loose. He wants wedge back in, Dick Bergman. Well, Dale Jarrett will be pitting before Kurt Busch in car number 97. Jarrett is running in second position right now, but he's about to, oh, we got a caution flag. They're all gonna pit at the same time. They'll all be in now. Ricky Craven against the wall. He's brought out the second caution of the day. Lap 141. That's a shame. He was running in the eighth position. Been in the top 10 ever since that first set of pit stops on lap 20. Well, I've been watching these cars off of two over there, Larry. And man, I'm telling you, they are right up against the outside of that retaining wall. And you can see the tire marks all the way across it. They are high, running that corner, high, wide, and handsome. Here come some guys trying to get laps back. Kurt slowing down. There goes Bud Strickland, Ward Burton. I don't think Jeff Green I, I just think, had to win a lap down. It was close. I think he may have made it. 
like that 30 was, I mean, I think that we're going to have to have the little transponder to tell us. Well, by our score, and he, he did get back on the lead lap. One fellow who did not make it was Matt Kenseth, Bush's teammate in the 13th position. This caution flag to the good fortune of fellows like Michael Waltrip, Mark Martin, and Dave Blaney who were in danger of going a lap down. Now, Dale Jr. had a right front going down there. He said he must have run over something. I wonder if something happened to the 32's right front. Kurt Busch's lead had built to 17 seconds over Dale Jarrett. Yes, uh, he was in another zip code. Yes. The right front is now down on Craven's car. And it, 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 it almost looks like it, the car didn't hit the wall all that hard as if the tire went down and he just got it up against the fence. We'll watch Kurt Busch, Sterling Marlin, and Jimmy Johnson as they pit the first, third, and fourth place cars. Twelve cars on the lead lap. All the leaders have pit this first time. Haven't been to many races this year when uh, halfway there were 12 cars on the lead lap. It's true. Steve Burns. Mike Joyce, Sterling Marlin says he likes the way this car is handling. They're going to make no chassis adjustments, just four tires, a tear off from the windshield. Right side tires on. Work starting on the left side. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Kurt Busch says when new tires are on the car, it feels a little bit wishy-washy. They're taking one quarter round in the track bar. That's a little bit like sneezing into your tires. Bush gone fast. And it's still a work in progress, Dick, on the 48 car, Jimmy Johnson. His car still loose. They're going to go one full pin, one splash. They went one round in in the left rear wedge, one round down in the track bar, and an air pressure adjustment, 16.4 seconds. Dale Jarrett beat the 97 off pit road there. Kurt tried to get around him, but he couldn't, uh, couldn't quite do it. To compound Ricky Craven's problem, when he pulled into his pit stall, they couldn't get the jack underneath, and they hadn't brought a long bar around to the right side. To, to lever it up in the air to get the jack under, so they had to go back and get one. It's a long stop. Yeah, I mean, that left side is only four and a half inches off the ground, so it's a lot lower. But look at the race to the pit line right here. There you see the story right there. 88. Dale Jarrett, he beats Kurt Busch off pit road. Kurt Busch is going to lead the lead for the first time in a long time. The Napa Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. By Pontiac, what would you do with some Pontiac excitement? By Graham, who reminds you that there's no better feeling than that of a job well done. And by John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. 144 laps complete of 250 in Southern California, the mountains just to the north. No boundaries up there. No, sir. That's a beautiful sight. It's our Ford no boundaries moment. And this weekend, it happened yesterday here at the California Speedway. Rookie Scott Riggs in only his ninth NASCAR Bush Series start wins his second race convincingly. Yes, he did. And I'm a big fan of his. I think I love that kid's enthusiasm. I love people that get excited about winning races. Jeff Green. We used to drive this car, drove it to a championship. The runner-up, Stacy Compton, Jack Sprague, the point leader, and Jason Keller. Plus, I like kids that drink chocolate milk. I think that's kind of neat. <laughs> so Sprague still has the point leader. A point lead, Riggs moved from fifth to third with that win behind his teammate, Jason Keller. After nine Bush Series races, here's the Craftsman Truck Series standings. Sponsored by Sears, Robert Presley, 20 markers up on Ted Musgrave after three races. David Starr, Rick Crawford, and Mike Bliss, the top five. Let's give them one to go. What do you say? Get back to racing. Let's go to the garage area. Well, at Darlington, Ricky Craven was running in second position when he was taken out with a wreck. That was none of his doing. At Martinsville, he led 40 laps, looked like a winner. Taken out with a wreck, none of his doing. What happened this time? Well, I guess it's one of the penalties of running the high line. I, I ran high all day, Dick, and I was fighting loose from the very beginning, and the guys were doing a great job working on the tide forward, but we couldn't get it tightened up getting in the corner, and I spent most of the day running 200 miles an hour in the corner turning right, and I just couldn't catch it that last time that got away from me, but uh, 
we're a uh, really good team. Gosh, I'm proud of this. We don't always finish top 10, but it seems like we're always running the top 10, and uh, uh, it's really uh, getting better and better. We'll get one soon, very soon. To Matt. Dick, Michael Waltrip made another visit to Pit Road. The reason they're topping off, I asked Slugger Labby, how far can you go? Because we are 55 laps to the finish. He told me this morning they could go 54. Larry Mack, it's close. Well, again, now it becomes a gas mileage game if we have this long run of green flag racing. And, Darrell, what does it do to Kurt Busch? He had a 17-second a lead. It's gone. Well, yeah, I don't think it'll bother him a bit. I think he'll just get back up on the wheel and drive back off and leave him again. Uh, I think he was up, probably upset he lost the lead on pit road because he sure hadn't lost it on the racetrack. But uh, if he keeps going like he has today, he's the man to beat. But the variable Dale Jarrett is right on his rear bumper now. Hadn't been there for a while. What do you say, guys? One more time. Crank those televisions down and let's crank it up. Squeezed up against the wall at turn two. He's coming to pit road. I don't know if he got squeezed up because that, the car just took off as if the right front tire was down or there was something wrong with the right side tires. It's hard to believe. He just came out of the pits, but uh, it sure looked that way. Now, you know, Kurt Busch could be, you know, fight some of that same thing that some of these other guys complain about all the time. He gets in traffic. Car might not be as good as it was out front in clean air. Bill Elliott was still on the lead lap. It's going to be hard for him to stay on the lead lap. He's about two thirds way down pit road at 55 miles an hour. Leaders coming off turn four right now. And the other thing you heard Kurt Busch say that on new tires, the car was a little squirrely and it may take it a few laps for it to come in. They run an air pretty low, I bet you. But Strickland is now coming to pit road. Steve Burns. Yeah, Mike just checked in with Bill Elliott's pits. Flat right rear tire on the nine. There you see, he goes a lap down right there. It's Dale Jarrett in 88. The rest of the guys go by him off turn two. That car was, to that point, a contender. Well, Kurt Busch got his hands full right now with lap cars, which is allowing Dale Jarrett to just check out. I, I, how many times do we see this, Larry? You get out front, you drive off and leave everybody. Get you get out there in that air. clean air, and you're long gone. And that's what Jarrett's doing right now. And Busch has got his hands full with these lap cars. And now's when the crew chief, that's when the young driver, you got to really talk to him. You got to really keep him focused. You got to tell him to calm down, not get excited. The car's going to come to you. Just, just drive your line and then everything will be fine. You know, we talked, Steve Burns talked about Michael Walter topping off one to go on lap 145. Dave Blaney popped off as well. Now that's 105 laps to go. I mean, look, we see this crowded traffic jam. This is a big wad on the this back straightaway. Maxi wad. But that would make those guys have to run 52 laps on one run and 53 laps on another. To this point, we've not seen anybody run that far. 48, 49 laps has been as far as anybody's run. Oh, but you crew chiefs, I'm telling you, you always amaze me. I just don't think we can make it. I just don't think we can do it. Would you ever pitch your driver with one to go to get him in the back and keep him out of that wad for a while? <laughs> I don't know if the crew would or not, but the driver, I guarantee I would. <laughs> I get up in the middle of I get up in the middle of something like that, I call him on radio and said, I'm gonna back up and find me a little clean air, boys. This is ugly. Steve parking that one car, not having a very good day. He's going back, uh, he's back in 24th right now. And the uh, pit, pit stop with the hood up for Hut Strickland, they have dropped a cylinder. Let's have a look at fifth place, Rusty Wallace. There he is, Steve Burns. Yeah, Mike, a little while ago, Larry McReynolds speculated about the track condition probably changing. Well, Rusty, on the last stop, they took a pound out of the right rear, one round of wedge in, four tire change. 
Rusty said the problem he feels now, the right front shock has too much rebound. Let's go to Matt Yoko. Steve, I mentioned earlier that Michael Waldrop and Slugger Ladd are gonna try to make it on one more stop. Let's check in here with Chad Knaus. The 15's gonna try to make it on one more stop. What about your team? Unfortunately, no, I don't think there's any way in which we can do it. It's kind of disheartening that somebody is probably gonna win this thing on fuel mileage when we have such a great race car. A couple more adjustments, and I think we'll have the strongest car here, but uh, we can't do it. Uh, somebody does, you know, more power to them. They cover their bases, we're getting the job done. Uh, I wanna say hello to Rick Hendricks' mom. She's back home, she's not feeling too good today, and, uh, you know, we wish her the best, and, uh, and we'll do what we can today. But you have to be pleased at how mature your driver is driving today. Oh, he's doing a tremendous job. You know, we've had a great year so far. He's come to these big tracks where, you know, everybody's difficult. Aerodynamics plays a big role, and he knows how to get the car out there, get the nose clean, and pass people, and uh, that shows his experience. Well, a former winner here at California slowing on the racetrack. Jeremy Mayfield said something broke. Yeah, two things. We're at the point in the race where the engines are really going to start to take a beat. They've been out there a while, they've turned a lot of RPMs, things are going to start breaking in some of these engines. The other thing is, all that rebound rust he's talking about in the right front makes you loose in. Keeps that corner pulled down all the time, makes the car real loose getting in the corner. You do that to try to keep that corner of the car down, but the price you pay is it can make it loose in. And that's the reason he's making all those changes to try to tighten the car. But we talk about the engine, the parts that can fail. I mean, the valves, the valve springs are taking a beating. But, Daryl, these RPMs, the bottom end, the rods, the, the cranks, a lot of those things are taking a beating. I think the rocker arms and the, and the, and the uh, valve springs and all those, that's what's going to give up on And we're showing you where the valves are. This is the valves right here. There's eight per side, 16 total. You have four on each side for intake, four on each side for exhaust. But that valve spring right there, there's there's two of them, an inner and an outer. That's the thing that's really taking a beat in those valve springs. And, and what we talked about here that is so hard on the engines, it's got a car in the wall down here. It looks like Kent. Kent is up against the wall down in turn one. I don't know if he's going to Caution is out, too. Yeah. Now, there is the problem that Mayfield had, and Greg Biffle had to jam on the brakes to scoot around him. And now Caution is out. I believe it's for Matt Kenseth that turned two. But just to follow up a little bit, Mike, the sustained RPM. You're 8,500 at the start finish line, and you still got to go all the way down to turn one. With that RPM hanging around 85 to 9,000, it vibrates itself apart. That valve spring is moving 75 times a second. Each one of those. That's a lot of work. Saw Kenseth go in here, and he just gets up too high. A lot like what uh, Ricky Craven said happened to him. And all this stuff up in here, folks, that's just sand, dirt, rubber. Once you pick it up on your tires, you are out of control. The only thing that'll turn you and slow you down is that big old white thing on the outside there. He will take a hit in the point, still come in here in second. Now, Daryl, we're out of our strategy now. We're gonna come to pit road, 95 laps to go. We can get in here and we can do it on one more stop. So all the leaders should be on pit road to fill up with, tire, with fuel, but I may only give you two tires since we only have nine laps on our tires. I want that track position like Dale Jarrett got a while ago. I might buy that. Would I you might consider buy no tires? I believe I'm gonna be there long enough. I'm gonna give you two okay. lights anyhow, but I bet we may see some gas and go. Gas on. Well, as we said, being out front in clean air makes a huge difference. All the fast, all the front guys are coming in. 11 cars on the lead lap. Here's Steve Burns. And Sterling Marlin listening to Tony Glover. They just, they're gonna do a gas and go. No tires on the 40. Well, Dale Jarrett's not going to do that strategy. He's putting at least two tires on. they got two more ready to go on the left side. Pitting right behind him is the 97 of Kurt Busch. He took outsides, and he's gone. Jarrett still on pit road as the crew changes forward. And Matt. And an only a two-tire change for the 48 car, Dick, of Jimmy Johnson. They adjusted with air pressure. And Dave Blaney made no stop at all. Well, remember, he's one of the cars that topped off with one to go at lap 145. These cautions will help him. Two cautions equal one green lap. We documented he needed to run 53 and 52 laps. These cautions will help him, Darrell. And uh, it's two strategies. One, you take two right side tires for track position. The other, Dale Jarrett, you take four now, so you can take two when you come down on that green flag stop if it goes green. Still a lot to play out here in Fontana, California. 94 laps to go. 
You are watching the Triple Emmy Award winning NASCAR on Fox. Green, green, green. Get a little backpack, put the baby in it, come on. Now, Bill, Bill likes to see a caution here pretty quick if we can have one. He scooted out in front of race leader Dave Blaney. That yellow car of Blaney did not make a pit stop under this caution. And since Bill was actually at the tail end of the lead lap, he was able to start in the outside line in front of Dave Blaney. But we documented maybe that Dave Blaney has to run 52 and 53 laps on his fuel. The furthest he's run earlier was 49 laps. These cautions, they'll help him a little, but he's going to have to go further than he's went all day long. Boy, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy Johnson uh, really got a, had a poor start off of two over there, and a bunch of cars sacked him up. Now, this looks like California rush hour, Daryl. And, and everybody's getting, a, they, can you feel the intensity picking up? I mean, here's guys think they got a chance to get back in the race. There's some guys now think they may have a chance to win the race. Steve, interesting strategy on the 77. Yeah, let's talk to Ryan Pemberton. Ryan, question is, can you make it on one more stop and stay out front? <laughs> yeah, that was the plan uh, uh, earlier, uh, that, that pit stop, uh, you know, about 15 laps earlier, we decided to top off there because we're until in the lead lap. We figured we could make it on one more. And uh, when that last stop came out, I said, this is our break. That's a couple cushion uh, lap that we need. And, it, uh, you know, I didn't want to not get new tires. But most of the guys came down and uh, just topped off. So we're on equal tires with most of them. And I think we can go all the way. So we'll see. All right, good luck, Ryan. Let's go to Matt Yoko. And Steve down here in the 15th and a Michael Waltham Slugger. That caution was mixed emotions for you. You didn't want to see it. But then again, when you look at the air pressure of the tires, you wanted to see it, didn't you? Yeah, we're kind of lucky that caution came out. You know, we're running 10th. Uh, last call in the lead lap and the right rear tire was going flat so uh, kind of a blessing in disguise from Napa Chevrolet. We just we took a gamble there on fuel mileage and, and we was going to be able to make it and hopefully win the race for Napa being that this is the Napa 500 but it didn't work out that way so now we just got to try another strategy here about another 40 more laps. They still have 40 more laps or so to try to get that car into victory lane. 12 cars on the lead lap counting Bill Elliott who is just in front of the race leader. Dave Blaney. Right now what Dave Blaney has going for him though is that side by side battle for second Rusty Wallace and Sterling Marlin. Yeah and, and don't be surprised by that 77 car running up front. He had a great run here last year. Finished 10th with Robert Presley at the wheel. Uh, you know that setup seems to still work. Yeah they were 10th here Darrell and they were 5th at Michigan. A similarly shaped track to this one. But he was started 32nd, but I go all the way back to lap 20 when that caution came out. Ryan Pemberton elected to take two tires. That put him in the top 10, and he's been there the entire race since then. Sterling Marlin is running a groove much higher than any of the other leaders. And I don't, and, and you don't necessarily want to do that right now. I'm sure he'd like to have that car sticking to the bottom, but nothing he can do about it. He's doing a pretty good job of hanging on to her. Ah, here we go. Now, see, look at this racetrack. We've got lots of room, plenty of places to go. Why would you want to get two and three wide? Because you can? Because you can. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun track to race on. It really is. It's got a, you get so many uh, lines you can run, so many options. If the car's not working, you can find a place to make it work. More car that has gotten a lot better since the beginning of the race back there. Ryan Newman, he's in. 13th position, but he's a lap down. You know, he was real loose earlier. They, they've got that car a lot better. He'd love to see a caution come out, see if he can get his lap back. Rusty's hanging in there pretty well, too. And don't forget, he won this thing last year, so uh, he knows how to win here. And he hadn't won a race since this race last year. I know he's hungry for a win. Elliot Sadler slow in the front straightaway. I don't know if he'll make it all the way around to pit road. A little bit of smoke. And Boy, just as I said that about Rusty, Mike, he near hit the wall off turn two over there. I cut it off back up. Sadler say he shut it down. I, the, the guys are running so high down in one and two, and they get up there, and that, if they get any of that sand and rubber on their tires, they just they lose all control of the car and they almost hit the wall. 85 laps to go, at least one more pit stop, depending on how this plays out. Dave Blaney, 1.2 seconds ahead of Kurt Busch here in Fontana. The Napa Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold, down, easy. 
that can just got a little dent in it. We're riding with Sterling Marlin. I believe he just brushed the wall. Uh, they're in fourth place. Let's see what happened to Sterling. Well, it's over in turn two, and I, I, I know I keep saying it, but see up there where he is, and he gets just enough of that sand and stuff. Ah, ooh, no yeah. question. Yeah, it was actually over coming yeah, out of turn four on the front turn stretch. Turn four, yeah. These turns are narrowing up. Elliot Sadler's car did coast all the way around the racetrack and made it to the garage area. You see a little bit of damage on the right side. I don't think it's serious. I don't see any tire rub, but he did bend that fender in a little bit. The and front fender it. area is very sensitive at this racetrack at these speeds. It certainly is, and it's allowed Dale Jarrett to close right up on him. Rusty Wallace had just passed Marlin when that happened. Wallace moves up into the third position. He's three seconds back of the leader. Rusty, your lap times that last run were really good in comparison to the lead cars. I know it was early in the run, but you were right there. That car felt really good that time. It was turning good. It wasn't loose or nothing. So but remember those air pressures. So let's see if this will work the next time. I just I, I love that kind of communication from the crew. I mean, he gives them information, but then they give him some back that helps him make smart decisions as the race unwinds here. Plus, it's kind of encouraging. And I, I, I know I talk about that all the time, but a driver loves to be encouraged. That a boy, give him an atta boy all the time. Right here, about 15 laps into this run, our, our top three, Dave Blaney, Kirk Bush, Rusty Wallace, they are running, and including Dale Jarrett in fourth, about the same times, 41.30s. The yellow car, Dave Blaney, that's the Jasper Ford, out in front here by two seconds over Kurt Busch. Blaney, a former World of Outlaws champion and uh, a racetrack owner, Sharon Speedway in Ohio. Dick Bergman. Jimmy Pennick is Kurt Busch's crew chief. You guys took two tires on that last stop. How is it working? Well, we're loose right now. Uh, hopefully, they'll come in a little later, but we're going to get four at the end here and see what's going to happen. We might have to tighten up a little bit, but right now, we're a little bit too loose. That car has been so fast today, Jimmy. What has it got that's making it so fast? Ah, uh, Kurt Busch. Yeah, he gives the credit to the driver. I bet if we could talk to Kurt Busch, he'd say Jimmy Fennick is the reason the car is so fast. Now, one thing that bothers me, uh, Larry, if the car is loose and he's running a little higher than he's run all day long, he needs to be real careful and not get that thing, get that back end out from under him. Just needs to calm down here. They'll fix it on the next stop. Like Skinner in the four car on pit road unscheduled stop. But yeah, you're such a fine line when you're up there at the top of that groove. You get a little bit out of that groove, it'll come around with you. And he hadn't really been up there, especially off of two, I keep watching. He hadn't really been up there like that all day. So you got to kind of feel your way along. I tell you, the, the guy that's the fastest guy on the racetrack, we see Dale Jarrett right here in 88, but the fastest guy is that guy trying to get a caution flag, Bill Elliott. He's running 41 19s. Our leaders are running 41 30s and 40s. He so much needs a caution flag. Elliott, the last car on the lead lap in 12. And there's Dave Blaney, continues to set the pace here in California. Blaney, Bush, Wallace, Jarrett, and Marlin, the front five. Welcome back to the Napa Auto Parts 500. Another full weekend of racing across the Fox Networks Friday at Fox Sports Net with Winston Cup qualifying on following on FX. Saturday, start your race day with NASCAR this morning. It's Saturday note this week, presented by Smirnoff Ice on Fox Sports Net. Then the Pontiac Excitement 400 on FX. Don't miss a single week of NASCAR on FX to get it in your area. Call 1 800 FX FX FX1. There is Sterling Marlin, Jeff Hammond, and I observing in the Hollywood Hotel battle in the new with the new paint scheme on his course dodge. Yeah, unfortunately for uh, Sterling, it looked like he had a car that could go up there and contend for the win, but he got in the turn four wall just a little while ago, and his car has not been quite as good as it was early on during the race. All right, the yellow car, we have 70 laps to go. Dave Blaney looking for his first ever Winston Cup victory. He has finished uh, sixth three times in his career, and Kurt Busch 
applying a little heat there behind him. But I wanted to talk about Dale Jarrett, currently running third. He's moving his way back up, Jeff. Remember last year, he came into California as the points leader and left as the points leader. He came in 16th into this race, and there's been a change for him since Jimmy Ellich left after Bristol and Todd Parrott came back and took over at Texas. Uh, yes, Chris, and probably that has to do with the old chemistry and guys being able to communicate. We always stress how much important uh, communication is with this uh, type of racing and I think they're finally getting back on track where they can contend once again like they did you know in the years past. We see right there the 24 car defending champion Jeff Gordon. He too looks like he's starting to find his groove and making his way up toward the front currently running fifth but Kurt Busch has been a force to reckon with all day long. He has got himself all over Dave Blaney right now. He's really coming on strong right here toward the end of the race. And yes, so it looks like this this uh, group of five, Blaney, Kurt Busch, Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, as you pointed out, Jeff Gordon, should be a terrific finish, and we'll keep an eye on that pit stop. The it's going to all come down to the final pit stop. Who gets on and off pit road the best? And the guys in front of us, they can tell you all about it. Mike? Thanks, Jeff. 182, 68 to go, and Dave Blaney's lead has been cut down to just a couple of car lengths by Kurt Busch. We're going to look at the speed going into turn three at the end of the back stretch between these two leaders, Dave Blaney, the 77, Kurt Busch, the 97. There you see it's pretty equal right there at the end of the back stretch. Not too equal through the middle of the corner. No, that's, that's where Busch is really strong. Kurt Busch coming for the lead. Blaney carries him a little bit up high and then drops to the bottom of the racetrack. But I'm happy for Dave Blaney. I mean, he yes. hasn't had a lot to brag about. Here he is leading this race, late in the race. Uh, I'm, I'm real happy for him. And for that team, Darrell, which led five laps last season, today uh, they've led more than 25 laps. And at the end of the front stretch, both of them was a little over 196 miles an hour. But Darrell, I think you picked up on it. The difference is in the middle of the corner. Who's picking that throttle up sooner, carrying it that speed off the corner. That's where Bush has just been so strong all day long, through the corner, especially the center. His car seemed to be working really good where you get back to the throttle. But now Sterling Marlin has slid back to sixth place after that brush with the wall. Yeah, he, yeah, and to quote Sterling Marlin, he said, uh, I think we messed the race car up. But they do know that the right front fender has been damaged, but they do think that they can fix it on the next stop. And Daryl, you mentioned that the, the front of those cars, that quarter panel is very sensitive. Yeah, it's what I was just going to say, Steve, as I saw, as I watched Sterling go by the right front fender, it's been in about like it was at Daytona. And so, uh, you know, if they have to stop the race, he might want to get out and work on it. How <laughs> about Ricky Rudd right behind him? Both the, the Robert Yates cars having a strong run today. Presently, Jarrett in third and Rudd in seventh. That's because of one thing. So what's up under the hood? Got some ponies and you can use them here, bud. But you know, Ricky, he's been steady all day long. Started in 37th, and now he's up to seventh position. And, and Mike, you mentioned it earlier. In, in Charlotte, here in about three weeks, he'll break the consecutive start record by Terry Labonte. Today is his 654th start. Started back at Riverside in 1981, January. Let me just follow up real quick. Those engines have a lot of power if you can hold them wide open. They got 800 horsepower if you can hold them wide open. And that's Todd's responsibility. They seem to have the combination today. Jeff. Darrell, I just noticed and watching down Sterling's car when you're talking about the right front fender, it almost appears like maybe the right side skirt has also been torn loose on the side of the car. And as Larry will tell you right quick, that can make a big difference. Also, how that car fit, you know, air hits the side of it, keeping the car out of the yaw mode to where it will handle good. Also, if that thing's flopping like that, he's going to lose some downforce as well as side bite when he turns off in the corner. I mean, there's a lot of things that affect downforce, front and rear, but those front fenders, I mean, they, when you talk about front downforce, those front fenders are so sensitive as we talk. And we're going to look at our animation right here. We talk about front and rear, front downforce is mainly the front end openings and these front fenders. That's what controls the air pressure on the front end. You talk about rear downforce, it's mainly the pressure on that rear spoiler. A lot of other little things like the rocker skirt that affects that downforce, but you also, you want as much in both ends as you can, but it's also a balance. It's not too much front or not too much rear to complement each other. And I think that's where the Taurus and the Dodge particularly have an advantage over the Chevrolet and the Pontiac is the balance. They can put more pressure on the front and they can equal their cars out better than the Chevrolets and the Pontiacs can. Quickest cars on the racetrack right now are Jeff Gordon in fifth place and Bill Elliott, who has distanced himself from the leader. He's the last car on the lead lap in 12th.
59 laps to go. There were 12 cars on the lead lap. There are now just 11. Jeff Gordon picked up a wrapper, a piece of plastic cellophane something on the grill opening of his Chevrolet. The car started to overheat and he had to pit. And he's not got a whole lot of opening there to, to, to stop up. Anyway, look at this. There's the wrapper. Look at how they got the grill taped up. That's so you get all that downforce over on the left side over here. Plus, he got a little piece of tape on the right side. That's a really small opening for uh, to keep that car running cool. While he came in, they put four tires on it, but he has gone one lap down. Kurt Busch, our leader now by 1.8 seconds over Dave Blaney. Dick Bergman. And Kurt Busch had the same problem, Mike Joy. He had a piece of paper on the radiator as well. Water temperature going up. Crew chief Jimmy Finney told him, tuck in behind one of those lap cars. Get real close. What he did, the piece of paper fell off. Kurt Busch out there. I'll tell you what, he's got the lucky charm in his pocket today. He'll be pitting right around lap 200. See, that crew chief's got some spirits. He knows that if you get up there behind another car, it'll take all the air off the nose, and that thing will just fall right off of there. That's a good example of why the car's arrow push when you're behind somebody. No air going on your nose. You know, go back to Jeff Gordon. It, it was a scheduled stop. They just had to do it about 10 or 12 laps early to get that wrapper off the grill. So he'll need a caution flag to get back in sequence. Uh-oh, Jeremy Mayfield might be that flag. This is oh, not yeah. what Jeff Gordon needs right no. here. Uh, guys, who's his teammate? Bill Elliott, the fastest car on the track, trying to get back on the lead lap out in front of the leader. No, coincidence. Let's go, to, let's go to the garage, guys. If that brake's locked up, it won't move. Caution flag is out. Now, earlier, there was a cut down We're tire. Make it to the end. One of the Everham uh, cars. And they thought there might have been a brake rotor problem. Turned out not to be. There's an NASCAR control. And caution is out on the speedway at lap 194. Jeremy Mayfield, the 2000 winner of this race. We had a brake dragon too. Is that why it didn't make it back around? That's too nah, I, just, I, I guess because I quit rolling over there. You know, I mean, I shut it off right to start finish line. I just didn't make it there. It's Ray Evernham and Mayfield talking it over. Joe Nemechek gets his lap back. 26 car. Uh, he was, I think he may have been two down anyway there. Gets one up back. One back yeah. And as we already documented, Bill Elliott now back on the lead lap. Ryan Pemberton, Dave Blaney's crew chief, he liked seeing that caution. Well, we got 55 laps to go, Larry. What do you think? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna obviously bring you in, put your four tires on, and give you fuel, put all the fuel I can put in there. And until we go back green flag racing, I'm gonna tell you, conserve fuel. Stay off that throttle under these caution flags if we think we can make it. 55 laps, that's 110 miles. Do the math there, Larry. Well, Dave Blaney, those guys were thinking miles. they could go 53 laps, so uh, it's going to be about, you know, probably 50 laps when we go back green flag racing. So since four of those laps will be under caution, that'll minimize the fuel they'll burn. There are Bush, Jarrett, and Johnson. The leader, third place and seventh place. We'll follow them on our triple split as they come to pit road. Jeremy Mayfield has been pushed in. To pit road, the record going back to its position inside turn four, and here come the lead lap cars. Eleven cars on the lead lap. Steve Burns. Big stop for Dave Blaney. He comes down to the attention of Brian Pepperdine's crew. They're going to put four new skins on the 77 of Dave Blaney. This was a good. Caution was a good break for this team. Left side tires going on. Mike Clark is the jack man to Dick Bergeron. Kurt Busch's crew ready to put four tires on this automobile. The instruction to Doug Newell, the fuel man, pack it full. Get every bit of the fuel in there. They're just a little bit short of making it all the way to Matt. Dick, the 48 car slid to a stop. They're making a track bar adjustment, a wedge adjustment, and they were going to pull a spring rubber out of the right rear. He said his car was still loose. It's a big race off pit road, and Johnson is finally down and away. That race off pit road started way back. Ricky Rudd came out of his pit dead even with Rusty Wallace, and they were side by side all the way down. But that 28 group, they came in eighth. Looks like they're going to go out third. They, they got the job done on pit road. That 88 crowd's been doing pretty darn good, too. They've won the race off pit road twice now. 
There's the pictures that tail the tail. Jarrett Bush, Rudd Wallace getting off pit road. 100 miles to go. You've got Jeff Gordon who did not pit on the tail end of the lead lap out in front of race leader Dale Jarrett for this restart. Five drivers came in and topped off, Larry. Yeah, Mark Martin, uh, Jeff Green, Michael Waltrip, Sterling Marlin, and Bill Elliott here with 52 laps to go. Get the green flag with 51 to go. Remember, Jeff Gordon was in on lap 188. His strategy right now is just trying to get that lap back. He can't go the distance. Squeeze play out of turn two. Boy, and Bush is there. He's going up the outside. Four wide. Going around the... Dale Jarrett. Boy, Johnny Benson went to the bottom, took him four abreast. Well, that worked out great for Kurt Busch, though. Opened the door for him, and through he went. And that's time and time again, as we've seen, whoever gets out front is pretty hard to beat. Oh, look out here, kid. Don't be messing with those lap cars. See Robbie Gordon in the 31 car. He's out there a lap down. Now he's on the tail end of the lead lap. He wants to see a caution flag just like Johnny Benson. Now, Jeff Gordon. Look, at Dale, look at Dale Jarrett. He says, look, kid, I can show you how to do that. Straight. You got me the last time I get you this time. <laughs> Straight up the middle, Jarrett. Well, those lap cars are really confusing the issue here. You know, they're looking at Ricky Ricky <laughs> down on the Green inside. Wide on the bottom. This is what they came to see today. Boys, this is what you call showtime. Dick Bergeron in Jarrett's pit. With his crew chief, Todd Parrott, have you got enough gas to make it all the way? Uh, unfortunately, no, we don't. We're going to be about two laps short. I just told him, run as hard as you can. Uh, and that's what it looks like he's doing. So uh, maybe we'll get some caution and uh, we can make it all the way. Right now, no, but we got a great race car. Yeah, they do with a whole lot of horsepower under the hood. To Steve Bird. Thanks, Dick. Ryan Pemberton, we just heard Todd Parrott say they cannot make it the rest of the way. Can your team make it? Um, it it's possible. Everything would have to line up just right. We have to get real good fuel mileage right here. I mean, it's going to be real close. Uh, it's going to be within a lap for us. Um, I told Dave and let him know what what he needs to be doing. And uh, if he uses it a little bit to his advantage, I think we can make it. So I'll keep our fingers crossed. Good luck. Tonight, Yoko. Jimmy Johnson looking for his first win as a Winston Cup driver. Chad can ask his crew chief looking for his first win. to 10 laps short. Uh, our fuel mileage isn't the best. Jimmy's pretty aggressive with the throttle, as we know, so our fuel mileage isn't real good. We may not have made the right choice on gear, so uh, we're kind of hoping for a late race caution. If not, uh, you know, maybe a gas and go or two tires and fuel here at the end. Meanwhile, the 15 car Michael Walter came back in, although they knew they could go the distance without having to stop for fuel. They came back in just as an insurance policy to Dick. We're going to check with Jimmy Fenning. Can Kurt Busch make it on fuel? Uh, it's going to be close. We're probably one lap short. Uh, I don't know. We're going to take around and draft a little bit to see what happens. So you need some caution laps. You need some caution flags. Well, if we had one caution, we'd make it then. Okay, good luck. I can't remember a day when Jimmy Fanning didn't say, it's going to be close. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trained. They go to they go to crew chief school and learn all that stuff. Well, we got a battle for fourth here. Rusty Wallace in the two car. Dave Blaney in that 77 car. But you know, Daryl, Ryan Pemberton, if Dave Blaney's trying to conserve fuel, that's hard to do when you're racing in this big water car. What you do, you roll out of that throttle a little earlier and get back to it just a little later off the corner. Just a little bit each in for 50-something laps. Oh, yeah. You, once you tell that driver, get me a couple of laps, I mean, you can do it. You just got to back out a little early. Don't turn that thing all the way up to nine grand. Back off over a little early and then squeeze ever so gently back onto it. And you know, one thing we really can't worry about, we're out there for the last 50 laps, but we've seen it happen to Jeff Gordon. We saw it happen to, to Kurt Busch, Jeff Hammond. We just can't, we, we don't need any paper across that small front end opening that we have. No, Larry, we really don't. We've added a lot of tape here in California to make a lot of downpours on the front nose. And as we can see, this little stuff like, hey, potato wrappers, candy wrappers, even a trash bag can get on the front nose of this car. Next thing you know, that opening you need to pull this race car, it's closed up. Now you know you're running hot, you're running hot, means you're going to lose power and possibly lose an engine here in California, which means you'll definitely lose the race. He's got Chris Meyer's whole lunch on the grill of that car. You know, another car it happened to earlier, Tony Stewart, right there. There you see it on the front end of his car. So we've had that happen a lot. You know, a lot of wind blowing out here. You see the flags in the middle of the infield. That paper blows up, and that's just like sucks that paper in on his front end open. Am I seeing uh, the 88 and the 28 look to me like they are out horsepowering everybody right now. But you know what? That's good news. But the bad news is make a lot of power, burn a lot of fuel. 
You have to feed those puppies. That's right. Well, don't talk parity today because the first five cars are Fords and they have six of the first seven positions right now. And Jeff Gordon's strategy of staying out didn't pay off because he's kind of falling back through the field. Jimmy Johnson gains a spot, moves to fifth on Rusty Wallace. Robert Yates' cars have never won here, but his cars have won five times at the similarly shaped two mile oval at Michigan. Dick Bergman. Steve Parks, front tire changer. Kelly Kellis is on the ground. He has twisted his knee on that last pit stop. They've got his knee wrapped up in ice, and he is preparing to leave the scene. That car out front there, folks, uh, Johnny Benson, he's a lap down, trying to hang on to the lead lap, doing a pretty darn good job of it, but I believe these Fords are going to eat him up here in just a second. You know, we heard Chad Knauss, uh, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, talk about maybe they pulled the wrong gear. He was running as few laps as anybody, only 46 laps earlier, a lower gear, more RPMs. That will use more fuel as well, along with more horsepower. Well, I, you know, early when he was leading the race, Larry, he'd go by here, and I told you, I think I mentioned the fact that, that they were turning the heck out of that engine. It's catcher all over the place. I'd like to know what the preferred line is because nobody seems to know. <laughs> I'm not sure there is a preferred line right now. Johnny Benson's Pontiac trying to stay on the lead lap ahead of that fast fleet of Fords. 42 laps to go. The Napa Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Smirnoff Ice, Intelligent Nightlight. By Enterprise Rent-A-Car, we'll pick you up. By Lowe's, now featuring the new Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon credit cards. And by Old Spice, the deodorant of NASCAR. I'm going to tell you, Mike, Larry, don't look now, but that old yellow car, that old hound dog has got itself in the hunt here now, boys. That'll be Blaney. Dave Blaney is right there with those lead cars, and he's a little quicker on the clock. He's running right around the bottom of the racetrack. Everybody else in the middle of three and four, kind of up the second, third group. Blaney right around that bottom. Everybody likes a little bit different line, Daryl. Is it to get clean air? Yes, that's exactly what it is. When you get this close together, you know, you just lose that front end. You're going to push out into the fence. So you got to keep that nose down and get a little pressure on that left front fender if you can. For the lead. And Benson, I mean, if they could ever get by Benson, they'll go on, but he's kind of holding them up. And it's not anything he's doing wrong. He's battling his own battle here, but uh, they get by him, they might be able to go on. He's doing his job with only 12 cars on the lead lap, he being one of them. He's trying to, he wants a caution flag, so he's staying where he needs to stay. Look at Bush. He gets on the outside of the, he gets on the outside of Ricky Rudd. Come on, kid, don't run him down in the gravel. Now, just drive smart. Another hound dog done moved in the picture. That 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, we was watching the monitor while we were at break. He has one of the fastest race cars. He's running 4130s. The leaders are running 60s and 70s. Steve Burns. Mike, Dave Blaney is as fast as the leaders. Everybody here in the pits, the spotter, telling him the same thing. They also feel like in the 77 pits now that they can make it to the end. They also feel fairly certain that the 88 28 can't. There goes the 77 under the 28. He's been running down the line. Here's Kurt Bush making a move on the 88. We got racing going on there. And then here's the 48. I love it. We go all day long and all of a sudden we got us a whale of a race for the first five spots. You know what, too? The closer you are to the lead, suddenly the better you think your gas mileage oh, is. Yeah, absolutely. Jimmy Johnson to the bottom on Dave Blaney. This is for fourth place. Turn two. Blaney gets a little better run off the corner. He comes off a little higher. Jimmy was under him, and it kind of bogs you down out there. But that low gear that I think Jimmy Johnson's got could pay off for him at the end of the race. That'll let him pull up off the corner running on the low and side. And he can run that bottom like that and accelerate really well up off the corner. And he just threw it into the bottom side of turn three and comes out with the fourth spot ahead of Blaney. He wants it. you got to want it. And then go up there and get it. Darrell Walter, you keep talking about young Kurt Busch. I'd like for you to know that the one race, the one race he ran here in a truck, he did win. He is the youngest winner here at California Speedway at the age of 21 in that truck division. Well, I tell you, Jeff, the kid just amazes me. He's smart. He's intelligent. He understands his race cars. He communicates with his crew. 
and he drives the wheels off of that bad boy. I've been telling you that since the first time I had an opportunity to work with him. He is really quite an incredible individual, especially for his age. He shows so much maturity to go along with what I would think would be inexperienced. He seems to have got so much raw talent. Well, they've ganged up on the 10 of Johnny Benson, and they're going to finally put Benson one lap down. Johnny gave it a good, hard fight. I talked to him yesterday. He did not inhale any of that fire extinguisher powder last week at Talladega. Good news, because that is tough to recover from. He was 100% uh, okay, but now he goes a lap down. Yeah, well, the leaders are by me now, so, uh, you know, I'll just let these other guys get up there and race each other. Maybe they'll be nice to me if a caution comes out. I get my lap back. Hang close. Fall into the back of these lead cars and just hang close. Well, here we come again with Rudd right on the bottom, Bush in the middle, and Jarrett up high. Jimmy Johnson just looking for an opening. I mean, he's all over the place. Six cars in the garage area. Mayfield, Elliott Sadler, Hutt Strickland, Stacey Compton, Shauna Robinson, and Kenny Schrader. 37 cars running. 11 of those on the lead lap. And I know we talk about Yates horsepower, but that 97 must have a little bit of something on the hood because he runs right with them all the way down the straightaway. Now behind the group we've been watching, Mark Barton, Bill Elliott, Sterling Marlin, and the two of Rusty Wallace in ninth place. And here's where Bush really gets him. Like, you see how he drove that thing down into the third turn, and he's going to slide right up in front of Dale. No, nope, Dale isn't going to let him. If I was Dale, I would let him. If Dale Jarrett on the high side would keep talking about keeping that momentum up, but where Kurt Busch, I know we've said it a few times, he's just so good right through the middle of the corner as you're picking that throttle up. He can stay in it, and the car keeps turning. Now, see Dale Jarrett trying to pin him down to the bottom. He's got it pinned down a little bit. Won't let him slide up. I really would, I really think if I was Dale, I'd let him go, because you see what's happening is pulling these other cars into the race. I mean, look at this. 220 laps in this race. We got four cars. You can throw a blanket over here battling for the lead. There goes Kurt. That's where he's strong. Larry, right there in the third turn. See how far, look how far ahead he pulled to Dale Jarrett. And look who capitalizes, Jimmy Johnson on the bottom. That 97 car is, it's hooked up. He can really pour it down in the corner. And Ricky Rudd powers past Johnson into second place again. And if they would have let the 97 slide up in front of him off the four down here the lap before, he'd be running second right now. But he chose to race him, and he drove those other two cars into the race, Dick. Well, there was a lot of conversation just before that pass between Kurt Busch and his crew chief, Jimmy Fennig. Finally, they decided the way to solve the knot. Fennig said, go past the 88, past Jarrett. And Bush said, if I can. Well, you just saw that happen. In the midst of all that conversation, Penny told him, watch out for that 48 coming up behind you. He is very fast. They are concerned about Jimmy Johnson, and they ought to be. Now for Kurt Busch, good for the lead, but maybe bad for gas mileage out front pushing that air along. He can make it. Welcome back to Fox Sports coverage of the Napa Auto Parts 500. 225 laps complete, 25 to go. Kurt Busch and Jimmy Johnson, two of NASCAR's young guns, going at it for the lead. If I was Kurt, I'd let Jimmy go. Jimmy Johnson cannot make it. He's going to be five laps maybe or so short on making it. Kurt Busch might be able to make it, and he probably will make it if he would get behind the 48 and draft him. Yeah, I mean, we've already documented the furthest Jimmy Johnson is running is about 46 laps, so we about know that he cannot make it. But I, I think his crew chief hit the nail on the head when he said maybe the gear selection, it's going to make him run fast, which he is, but it's not going to get a real great gas mileage. Only four cautions in this race. Shauna Robinson's crash early at lap 18. Ricky Craven and later Matt Kenseth scrubbed the wall, and then Jeremy Mayfield's car rolled to a stop on the back straightaway. No serious incidents. And Kurt Busch, Jimmy Johnson out in front of Ricky Rudd and Dale Jarrett by 1.3 seconds now with just 23 laps to go. Steve? Yeah, Michael went down to check with Lee McCall, crew chief on the 40 car of Sterling Marlin to see if they got the right front fender fixed. He said he didn't think it was that bad, but Sterling said it's not driving anywhere near as well as it did early in the race. They're going to be very close on fuel. Same thing for Rusty Wallace. They may be a lap short. Rusty says this last set of tires, not as good as the last set. Here we go. Like I said, I just don't think I'd fight it right now. I'd get in behind him and follow him. Don't do anything. 
in Matu. Oh, trouble down here. Carter's trying to get in the oh, pit. Hard in the wall. That's Bill Elliott. Little lead. Dale oh, Earnhardt. Lee. And Kevin Harvick. A very hard crash for Elliott. Oh, yeah. The first serious incident, of the, or rather for Earnhardt, Earnhardt, the first serious incident of the day. And, excuse me, it was not Bill Elliott. It was Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, Jr. I saw the red yeah. and white, and I, I yes. thought it was Bill Elliott. And it was hard, Darrell. It was. That was an incredible impact. Field coming around to take the caution flag at lap 228. Well, it's on the left side, driver's side. I, I, I tell you, I don't like the looks of that, guys. The window net's down. That's the sign we look for. Telling safety workers, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, I'm frustrated, but I'm okay. No, guys, he's, he's, he's laying over there, and I mean, that, that, that's a hard lick. And Kevin Harvick, the second car involved. I, I think Dale Jr. was trying to get in the pits and uh, or somebody was there were several, there we go almost like maybe Kevin Harvick was Harvick down was trying, trying to get in the pits, in the pits. And, car. oh that's Oof. it I'm telling you that that's is a brutal a, hit it is Kyle Petty just squeezes through there has to go to pit road to take evasive action so does Jeff Gordon that 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 I don't like the looks of that All the cars have now taken the caution flag and rescue workers come to the aid of Harvick and Earnhardt Jr. You're exactly right, Darrell. Harvick had slowed. He was trying to get to pit road. And Earnhardt Jr. going under him, the two collided. See, he's awake, alert, talking yeah, to the rescue personnel. He's, uh, I just knocked the breath out of him, I guess. I tell you, they've done such a great job with the inside of these cars and, and the head and neck restraint systems and everything else. Uh, See Kevin Harvick out in his car. He just got, I think, I think he's got the breath knocked out of him, plus. I hope that's all it is. 20 laps to go. Fifth caution of the day. From the butt cam. Here he is, and he sees all of a sudden there's Harvick on the outside. Oh, boy. Oh, oh wow. See his hands on the steering wheel. Well, I just am uh, thankful he got out of the race car because uh, that left side lick like that, uh, that, was, that was a very hard impact. Again, I just think it's a tribute to all the things we've learned about the inside of these race cars and how to protect the drivers. We'll get an update on Dale Jr. as soon as we can. It makes the fuel mileage question pretty moot. When pit road is open, after some of this is cleaned up, we should see the leaders come in and top off for the final run. Right. Harvey cut a tire, came right down on us. Junior, you all right? Help me. Help me. Help me. Hurry up, Junior. Hurry up. Hi, right, Junior. Come on. Coming fast as I can. Junior, you okay? Yeah, Hang in there, buddy. Just start breathing.
Richards from the California Speedway. This is MRM Radio from Washington, NASCAR. Eighteen laps to go under caution for the first serious incident of the day. Kevin Harvick had a tire go down, was trying to gather up his car. Instead, he collected Dale Earnhardt Jr., who pounded hard into the wall. Both drivers got out of their cars and are now being taken to the care center to be checked over. Pit Road uh, may be open this time. He's waving the green flag. It will be open now. We're going to have about 15 laps to go. I think the right thing to do, Darrell, with 11 cars on the lead lap is change four tires, but I bet you there'll be some guys try some two tires, knowing they don't have long to the end of this race. Get that track position. Well, it's been so critical and it's so hard to pass. I can't imagine you wouldn't take four, Steve. Well, Darrell, the 77 has been going back and forth, debating on four versus two. It seems like the latest thing they're going to do is take two tires. Mike Clark, the jack man, gets the 77 up in the air. Right side tires going on for Dave Blaney. That's it, Dave, Dick Bergeron. Kurt Busch is going to take two tires. They debated the wisdom of taking four tires. It was pretty much Kurt's call to take two. Up a little air on the right-hand side. He stalled the engine. That slowed the pit stop a little bit to Matt. Dick, gas only for Jimmy Johnson. They were going to go with a two-tire plan, but the Roush cars were going to go for two tires. That's what their spotter, Chris Osborne, told them. So Chad Canal said gas only for the 48. So... I mean, I tried to watch pit road close, and the only car I saw that took four tires was Rusty Wallace in the two car. Most everybody was two tires. Jeff Green with a hood up on pit road. Let's take a look at some replays with Fox tracks in on Dale Earnhardt Jr. to show his speed. He's, this is so unexpected. I mean, he doesn't expect anything. He's coming through there. I mean, he hit that wall at 130 miles an hour. And, Two years ago, without all the safety equipment in these cars, that would have been a serious accident. Today, he walks away. <laughs> Looking out the windshield, he almost probably didn't even see what was fixing to happen there. It happened so fast. It just took him by such surprise. I mean, you're coming through there, and all of a sudden, that car turns and hits you. Watch its car scrub off speed here from 150. 134 as he impacted the wall. Man, and, and folks, when you hear him just go thud like that, I mean, it's just like getting hit with a ball bat. Seventeen laps to go as the lap down cars make pit stops. We'll be right back to California. The Napa Auto Parts 500 on Fox is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. By Subway, fresh made sandwiches on fresh baked bread. Subway, eat fresh. By Circuit City, we know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And by Ford, no boundaries. Kevin Harvick's just come out of the infield care center. Kevin, are you okay? Tell us what happened. Yeah, I'm fine. I popped the left rear tire going in turn three and um, about the last save I had to make, I hit the dang eight car and he hit the wall. And, uh, I think he's all right, though. They, just glad everybody's okay. All right, thanks, Kevin. They're about to go green, guys. Bill Elliott did not stop under this caution, and he is the race leader. He didn't stop. The 48 stop took no tires. Ricky Rudd, Kurt Busch, they took two right side tires. The 48 car could be the friend that the nine needs because they're on equal tires. There wasn't any laps to go. Bill Elliott was a lap down. Now he's leading this race with 14 laps to go. And on the inside, that chartreuse car is Greg Biffle, who is up to 12th in his first ever Winston Cup start. Kurt Busch didn't get a great restart there compared to the other guys. Maybe he's laying back and get a run off of two of them here. Whoa. Boy, Jimmy Johnson got a run off oh. the middle of one and two. Bill Elliott didn't get no run at all. He's going to lose several positions on the backstretch. Jimmy Johnson, he has the lead at the end of the backstretch. Here comes Rudd and Bush on Elliott. This is these young drivers, Kurt Busch and Jimmy Johnson. They got to they got to be smart here now. Use your heads. You got plenty of time. The thing that Kurt Busch has to worry about, he took two tires earlier, took him a few laps to get going. Sometimes those two tires don't match up good with the two hot ones you already got on there. So it takes a lap or two for things to come in. Greg Biffle trying to get back on the lead lap, number 16 against Johnson, who's going for his first win and only his 13th career Winston Cup start. Poor 
Ricky Rudd in that 28 car. He got to run at the end of the back, that back stretch right there, getting into turn three. Look right there behind Kurt Busch. Mark Martin in that six car has fought his way into this thing. Now, what Bush does not need is to have to race Bill Elliott here. He needs to get on by him if he's going to have a chance to win this race because Jimmy Johnson's going to get a big lead on him if he doesn't watch out. Whoa, whoa, Bush got into the side of Bill going into three, or into one, I'm sorry. And here comes Mark Martin underneath him. And here comes the six down on the bottom. Kurt Bush did a <laughs> great save getting down into turn one. He was alongside of Bill. And, whoa. Martin could not capitalize. And falls in line behind Elliott. He was probably waiting to see where Bush was going to end up because it looked like he was going to wreck there for just a second. Biffle in the 16 car, he moved to the high side right there, let Jimmy Johnson in front of him. But Ricky Rudd's going to be right on the rear bumper, Jimmy Johnson. They're going to be side by side almost at the start finish line. Rudd will fall back in behind, getting into turn one. Rudd's going to be hard to beat. He got two right side tires. He's going to be the man to beat. Kurt Bush is going to win this race. I believe he's going to have to drive around the 28. Jimmy Johnson got gas only, but he's got the lead with 11 laps to go. You know, I, I was, I, how many times have we seen this happen on this new series of Goodyear tires? Two tires, no tires, you never know what's the right strategy. Saw Kurt Busch uh, just go by the 16 car, he pulled over and let him go. It's like Jimmy Johnson beat Rudd getting into turn three, maybe drove it in a little too deep, paid the price a little bit on the exit of turn four. 10 laps to go. 10 laps, 10 to, laps to, go. to go. For an update on Dale Earnhardt Jr., here's Steve. Well, Mike, the latest that we've heard is that Dale Earnhardt Jr. should be okay. They're going to hold him for some more observation. The moment we hear something, we'll pass it along to you. Thanks. Kurt Busch is there, guys. He barely makes up time to the. I, I tell you, that car is handling so good. And where Jimmy Whoa. Johnson is so strong is off of turn two. But remember, we've been talking about that lower gear pulls him off turn two. He actually pulled Rudd on the exit of turn two. Kurt Busch gets in. I, I think Kurt's got it. I think he's got a shot at it. He's just really handling good. His two tires look like they're coming in now, and the car's working pretty good for him. He can really pour that thing down in the corner. Watch him right through the center of the corner here. Hey, guys, just watching Kurt Busch's lap times. He ran the fastest lap of his race today on lap 240, so I think he's good to go. He's coming. Yeah, I think all he needs is for that air pressure to come up in those right side tires to match up with the lefts that he had on, and uh, he's going he's gonna to be all right. Catching him in one thing, though, we've seen it time and time again. <laughs> Passing him is something else. And he caught Rudd in a hurry, but he's kind of stalemated behind him there. Eight laps to go this time. Darrell, last week at Talladega, you could catch the leader, but aerodynamically, you couldn't pass him. Why is this place different? Well, here it's all about handling and just putting the throttle to the floor. If you can get back in the gas, hold it wide open like Bush is doing right here, he's going to get a run up on Ricky Rudd. Talladega, you just hold it wide open all the time. It's all about momentum. Here it's all about timing and getting back in the throttle and the car handling. Poor Rudd beat him so bad down that back straightaway. He's taking advantage of that uh, 800 horsepower he's got on the hood. Bush is a lot better right through the middle of three and four, right on the rear bumper here in turn four. Whoa. Seven to go. You see what happens when he gets right up on him. The thing takes off with him. That's that dreaded arrow push. I knew we'd say it. Seven laps to go. <laughs> if Kurt Bush is going to win this race, he's going to have to get by Ricky Rudd pretty soon, guys. Jimmy Johnson snaking him down the back straightaway, trying to break the draft on Ricky Rudd, the 28 car. Pretty gutsy call to bring that car in, just dump a little fuel in and send it back out. No tires. That's sure a great was. call, guys. Six laps to go at the line. They almost look like that everybody's kind of settled in here and said, look, I can't pass anybody. I better hang on to what I got. And here comes Dale Jarrett. He's going to work his way by Mark Martin as they go down into turn one. It's a battle for fifth. Bill Elliott's hanging right in there behind Kurt Busch, not too far back. Chevy Ford, Ford Dodge, the front four. As we've seen all day, though, Larry, the guy that gets out front is just hard to catch him. 
haven't seen that all year. Five laps to go this time. Right now, Jimmy Johnson, Ricky Rudd, their lap times are almost identical, 41-20s. And Dale Jarrett was not able to complete the pass on Mark Martin. He'll try again at turn one. No, Mark's keeping him pinned down on the inside, and Dale can't get it up, can't get back in the, didn't have enough racetrack to make the pass. Boy, don't you know Kurt Busch is just, man, what have I got to do? Jimmy Johnson said, here's what you got to do. You got to get out front at the end of the race and you can win. Whoa. Steve Grissom in trouble with the right front tire. Now, we've got to see if any debris comes off of that car from the tire to cause us to have a caution. No caution yet. Four laps to go. That's a and piece a brake of brake rotor. rotor laying right there on the racetrack. It's, it's kind of hard to tell where it is. Looks like it could be down out of the groove. Boy, Kurt Busch made a great run up on the back of Ricky Rudd that time. Definitely what Jimmy Johnson wants is Kurt Busch and Ricky Rudd start racing side by side. That thing is down out of the way. I don't believe it's going to cause anybody any problem. It's down the inside of the racetrack. And Grissom makes it around safely to pit road. But you know, they've been snaking back and forth down that back stretch. Here there. comes Busch up under the up under the 28 car. He's got a run on him. They're side by side. Three laps to go. Boy, this is, you've got to be careful, Kurt Busch. You'll be loose on the inside going down in that corner. And Jimmy careful. Johnson, he is loving what he's seeing behind him. I've got two of you in my rear view, and the oh, distance yeah. is growing. But now this 97 car is doing what it's done all day long. It's just getting better and better on those two right side tires. But he's going to run out of laps. He's going to catch Jimmy, but I don't think he can pass him. Going to have to outbrave him, Daryl. Look at him. Look at him. Boy, he made a lot of ground up he, right there in the middle of three and four. He, he's driving that thing down in there, I tell you that. But he somewhat paid the price on the exit. But That's he's all right. doing what he has to do here right now. He's got two more laps. He's got two more shots at it. And he's going to gain on him down here. He's gained on everybody through the center of the corner all day long. Jimmy Johnson, don't look back now, but when they come by the next time, you're going to have a whole mirror full of 97. Johnson's got that good low gear. He gets up off the two really strong. But where Kurt Busch is really good is watch this when they get to turn three. Here we come down into three. Now watch Busch close. It's almost like Jimmy Johnson puts the brakes on right there. He gains about two or three car lengths, but Jimmy Johnson knows where you beat people is off the corner here in Fontana. We'll have the white flag this time. Yeehaw. Two of the youngest drivers in the field. Rookie and a sophomore fighting for the win. Final lap. And look lined up behind them. 28, 9, 6, 88, 40. All the over 40 veterans. Yes. Jimmy Johnson in his 13th start, going for his first career win and trying to become the ninth different driver to win a Winston Cup race for Rick Hendrick. If that thing doesn't quit running on him, he's got it made. <laughs> well, watch Kurt Busch drive off in this end before. Picks up about three car lengths. Jimmy Johnson eases back to that throttle. Jimmy Johnson off turn four, sixth in points, leading rookie on the tour, and he's going to win his 13th start. Here before a hometown crowd of his. What a race. What a strategy. I mean, you gotta give Chad, you gotta give Chad a pat on the back, guys, for Pete's sake. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> How many crew chiefs down there right now are, are kicking themselves in the rear right now saying, why did I even stop? Why did I take any tires? Look at that. Second straight win for Chevrolet. Johnson led 62 of the 250 laps. Oh, yeah, he had a good car all day long. He stayed in the hunt. No way. Here comes car owner, Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Congratulate that boy. He, he co-owns this car with Rick Hendrick. Gordon finished 16th. Look at this. You the man. You the man. No, you the man. No, you the man. <laughs> no, no, no. You the man. Remember, this is the car that Jeff Gordon won at Michigan and Indy with last year. If you're going to be the man, you got to beat the man, and he did. But I, I'm proud of Kurt Busch. I'm proud of both those kids. They drove great races. Kurt yes, Busch had a great car all day, fought his way up there to second. In 1965, Dick Hutcherson. Was a rookie who won in his 13th race. Gordon did the side of his car. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff did that. Jeff did that. It wasn't there a while ago. <laughs> now, Hutcherson won his 13th start in 65. 
in his rookie season went on to win nine races in his rookie season and finished second in points. Do I smell burnouts? I believe we do. These fans are going crazy. They love it. Here we go. Walk that thing. Don't walk it down through there. Give me some more smoke. Oh, let her go. I bet Rick wouldn't even care if he blew it up. <laughs> I don't think he's done. There was nothing like that first win. Is oh, man, what a thrill. What a thrill. Especially a 500-mile race here in California. There's his crew chief, Chad Canales. Chad, baby. Good job, man. Matt Yoakum. And Jimmy Johnson bringing the car back up pit road as crew chief Chad Canals running down to get him. Arms up in the air. He came on the radio and said, I think I broke it. Chad Canals moved south from Illinois, hooked up with the 2014 Chad Old Rainbow Warrior. You learned from the best Ray Everett Hammond, a gutsy call on pit road. I'll tell you what, you know, Ray got his first win at Charlotte, calling a two-tire stop. Our car was handling great all day. The only thing that ever hurt us was lap traffic. You know, we got back there a little bit. Jimmy drove that son of the gun right back to the front, you know, and uh, we knew the car was balanced good. We knew a lot of people were going to take two tires, but we just had to go for it. Now, you won a lot of championships and races with Jeff Gordon as a crew member, but how special is this now to win as the crew chief? <laughs> Talk about making it full circle. You know, when I moved down here back in, like, 1991, I wanted to be a crew chief, and... Uh, a lot of people told me, no way, you shouldn't do it, or it's too much work, or you never could do it, and uh, I guess we proved them wrong. He sure did today. A very popular win all up and down pit road. Chad Knauss, a Winston Cup winner. Wasn't running as Jimmy Johnson rolled it into victory lane. Well, he said he thought he broke it, and <laughs> I think he, he may did. very well have. <laughs> Welcome to our Napa Auto Parts 500 post-race show on Fox. Jimmy Johnson, in only his 13th career start, has become a first-time Winston Cup winner. Here, put this one on, man. That's a winner's circle hat, buddy. Put it up, man. Jimmy Johnson getting ready to come out. Gotta have the glasses. Driver to win for Rick Gotta Hendrick. have the hat. <laughs> yeah. Come here, baby. Let's get out of our Circuit City winner's circle, Dick Bergeron. Jimmy Johnson, do dreams come true or what? This is unbelievable. I know my dad is sitting at home going crazy, my mom, but uh, what you do here, dad figures you don't come to the race and we win the dang thing. This is awesome to do in California in front of my hometown. Uh, I just can't sit out for Lowe's, all the support from the employee owners, Hendrick Motorsports, Jeff Gordon and Rick Hendrick for believing in me. These guys back here believe in me. How about that call? How about that call at the end? We knew it was gonna be close, uh, the tires, it was just going to be close, and uh, nobody said anything. Just let me get my job done, and here we are, victory lane. And you were watching Kurt Busch close it in. What were you thinking? Oh, here's Rick Hendrick behind you. <laughs> Car owner Rick Hendrick. Big hug. Jeff Gordon's on his way. Everybody's here to see you. Uh -oh. yes, Where's Mr. Tillman? Where's Bob, Bob Tillman, Tillman from Lowe's here? He owes us a boat. <laughs> What's this like to be in a Winston Cup victory lane this early in your Winston Cup career? This is so cool. Um, it's going to sink in as the days come, but... Uh, Right now, it's just it's just cool. It's just really cool, and uh, it's going to be a heck of a good time tonight, I can tell you that much. Yeah, your car owner's on his way. Jeff Gordon, here he comes. Come on, Jeff. <laughs> How about that? How about this guy? Guess we hired the right guys. Which that one? Man, I'm, I'm tickled to death. I couldn't be more proud of this guy right here. What a great team. Are you surprised he has won this early? You know, not the way they've been running. Uh, and I saw how good he was today, and... You know, when the when the right chemistry gets put together, it doesn't matter, you know, how many races you got under your belt. And 
great team, great uh, you know resource at Hendrick Motorsports. But these two guys have been clicking all year long. Couldn't be more proud of them. Pretty good car owner too. Mike Joy, this is a happy, happy place down here. I'm sure it is, Daryl. There is so much good young talent in this series. Well, it's, it makes it so exciting. I mean, you look at the two cats who were first and second. They're in their 20s. You look at the next three guys, next four guys, next five guys, next six guys. They're over 40. So it's a great balance. You the man. No, you the man. <laughs> Today, Jimmy Johnson is the man in California. We'll be right back. Jimmy Johnson is today's winner, and Chevy congratulates Jimmy and the number 48 Monte Carlo on its big win today. Jimmy will tell you the only thing that comes close to Monte Carlo's reputation on the track is its reputation on the street. More champions depend on Chevy. We'll be there. Let's go back to the Care Center and Steve Burns. Mike, we've worked our way down to Pitt Road on lap 228. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was involved in a very hard accident here at the California Speedway. He just came out of the infield care center. He is on crutches. His right ankle is taped. It's being iced down. He's back in his motor coach right now, but he has no broken bones, just very badly bruised right ankle. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Well, Steve, a, a great day for Kurt Busch, but yet a disappointing day. You had a great car. It was a nice piece. I have to thank the all these crew guys, all the people that have helped me get here, all the teams and all the different drivers and, and people I've worked with, it really all came together. Just, it's unbelievable. We ran here in a truck, a Winston West car. My Southwest Tour guys gave me pointers. There's only one guy that counts though, Jack Roush. It's unbelievable for him to give me this opportunity, just at 23 years old and trying as best I can. We were pedaling, we had a great car out of the hole. We just missed it on top end a little bit. We'll tell the motor shop what we can do to fix it and come back with a different gear. That's all there is to it. But just an awesome run. We were lead by 15 seconds. I don't think that's happened for a while. Just a stout piece. We just didn't have the right position at the right time and wearing a hat similar to the man in the hat's hat. I wasn't a cat in the hat today. I mean, we were all on ass, but we just didn't quite have it at the end. It was a strategy where I never thought we'd get beat by gas only. Steve Burns. Thanks, Matt, with Bill Elliott, who finished fourth. Bill, great run. Tell us about your day. It was a long fault day. You know, we just kept napping away at it. You know, we felt like we had a pretty decent car and happy hour yesterday. But, you know, as you, as you try to trans, transfer from the back to the front it makes you know the farther you go up the totem pole the harder the cars are to pass and you know this arrow stuff is so sensitive and, and trying to get in clean air trying to get in the right place but you know the, you know one thing i gotta say the, the motor ran great and the car drove great and you know i put myself in a bad position where i thought i had a flat and i came in and put myself a lap down got my lap back then kind of struggled along there and you know made a call to stay out and i just couldn't hang on to it down there in one but you know that's kind of the way it goes Good day, Bill. We'll let you and your son get on the road. Let's go back upstairs. Well, for a good bit of the day, Bill Elliott was the fastest car on the racetrack. Oh, yeah. If he, uh, of course, he stayed out and uh, he finished fourth. I mean, look at the third and fourth place uh, finishers. Ricky Rudd, Bill Elliott started in provisional land at the beginning of the That's day. Right. Sterling Marlin in seventh. He did what he needed to do to maintain that points lead over those guys behind him. And brother Mike, a top 10 finish. Good for him. Good day for Marlin because Matt Kenseth finishes 20th, so Sterling extends his point lead. Semi-car owner Jeff Gordon, uh, just a long day after that uh, piece of paper on his grill. 33 cars running at the finish of 500 miles here in California. Oh, we'll see you next Saturday night at Richmond. Let's uh, go on down to the Hollywood Hotel as checkout is in progress. All right, thanks, guys. And Sterling Marlin increased what was already the largest points lead uh, of the season after this race. Kurt was jumping from fourth up to second. And again, the Roush cars overall on the Winston Cup point standings doing very well. Yes, always holding strong right now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those credits that kind of go to everybody. They keep talking about the engine department of Roush Racing, all the guys that work in the aerodynamics as well as uh, the car builders themselves are doing an outstanding job, and the young talents just keep putting it on. Jimmy Johnson, his Lowe's Chevrolet, his uh, first victory in Winston Cup, the California kid. He talked about missing, you know, the hamburger, local hamburger in California, the In-N-Out Burger, and he would drive through very fast. But Jeff Gordon, I guess the next best thing, being a co-owner and having your guy win and congratulating him. It's, it's got to be exciting if, if for an owner to be able to go down there and be a part of what's happening here. And like you said, hey, we hired the right guy. And for Jimmy Johnson, we've done a lot of things with Jimmy early this season. And I can't say enough about how mature he's been and how great he's done so far. And uh, 
hey, we're in Hollywood, and great things happen in Hollywood. Oh, yeah, dreams come true in Hollywood. But how about Kurt Busch saying, and you questioned it at the time, I think Daryl did the guys in the booth, that yeah. Jimmy Johnson going with gas only in that last pit stop, and it proved to be the difference. It really did. I mean, track position, we've always talked about track position all year long. But today I really thought the guy who had the fresher tires, as good as the cars were, would probably have had a, de a definite advantage. But, man, he proved us wrong. He got up on that wheel, and he really did what had to be done. And, uh, held that lead right there to the end. 26-year-old Jimmy Johnson comes home and uh, wins for Jeff Gordon, uh, the owner of his car. And another full weekend of racing across the Fox Networks beginning Friday on Fox Sports Net. Winston Cup qualifying, followed on FX. Winston Cup practice, then the Bush Series live from Richmond. And then on Saturday, note the day change here. Saturday, start your race day with NASCAR this morning, presented by Smirnoff Ice on Fox Sports Net, followed by the Pontiac Excitement 400 on FX. And don't miss a single week of NASCAR on FX to get FX in your area. Call 1-800-FX, FX, FX1. That's easy to remember. And UPS, the official delivery company of NASCAR, delivering a chance to win four tickets to the 2003 Daytona 500 on Fox. Just log on to foxsports.com. Keyword is UPS Racing. Nobody does it better. The coordinating director of NASCAR on Fox is Artie Kempner. Today's race being produced by Neil Goldberg, the pit producers Pam Miller and David Blatt, technical producers Steve Stum and Dave Hill, associate directors are Barry Landis, Derek Manning, the associate producer Bill Richards, broadcast associates Chuck McDonald, Eric Billigmeyer, and Judy Wong, the coordinating producer of NASCAR on Fox, Richie Zions, call him Z, the senior producer Bill Brown, and the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. After 500 miles at the California Speedway, the rookie, Jimmy Johnson, a California kid, winning the Napa Auto Parts 500. Next week, join us on FX from Richmond, Virginia, for Friday and Saturday Night Racing. Thanks for watching NASCAR on Fox.